Hi, I'm Sarah Aviva, and you may have seen me on episodes and TV shows such as Lucifer, iZombie, Supernatural, Unreal, Ice, Aftermath, dot, dot, dot. You can see it all on IMDb. And you are listening to Neil Before Pod. Neil Before Blog presents Neil Before Pod. <laughs> Hello and welcome to a venomous edition of Neil Before Pod, the podcast that loves to eat lobster right from the tank. We're a little late to the party but have overcome great hardships like the loss of internet to bring you a discussion about the Sony Spider-Man spin-off Sans Spider-Man Venom. Joining me from a weird planet filled with goo creatures, Chris. Hello. And one half of a shared entity, Gus. I am considered a loser on my planet. And the other half of said shared entity, Natalie. I don't agree with that. Well, you're in Why the same place sharing entity? microphones. So, therefore, shared uh, entity. Symbiosis. Fine. Or sim... I don't know. Symbiosis. How do you pronounce it? Who knows? That would be, that'll be symbiosis. one of the questions. Symbiosis. Symbiosis. Yeah. yeah. It's a reference yeah. to the, the trailer. But, but anyway, we are here. Yeah. For episode 99 of the regular format podcast, with episode 100 coming soon. I don't know when soon, how soon, but eventually. How soon is now is a a golden question. Well, it may or may not be ready to go, other than a couple of little bits. So there we go. Oh my God, don't tease us. Stay tuned for episode 100, whenever I can be bothered uploading it. Sometime before we record the next, whatever podcast it will be. So, anyway, enough of the advertising. (laughs) We shall start off with our regular format, Neil Before Rise Against. Who would like to go first? Um, Me. Go for it. What are you kneeling before this episode? Tom Hardy. (laughs) (laughs) Naturally. And also, uh, Eminem's track for Venom as well. You're kneeling before Eminem's Venom song. Yeah, it's actually, like, it's brilliant. I beg to differ. It's terrible. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's, look at the lyrics, and you're like, wow, in the space of him going, hum, nim, nim, there's a whole sentence in there. It's incredible. Do, do you think when he got the gig of, right, you're going to do the, the main song for this film, you know, you're the next Chad Kroger getting to do this iconic song. Oh my God, this, you know, this film. <laughs> who so. else has compared him to Chad Kroger? <laughs> <laughs> That's so, dreadful. Do you think he stood in front of a whiteboard, wrote the word venom, mm-hmm. and then sat and racked his brains about what actually rhymes with it? Like mayo. Doesn't rhyme with venom. Oh. No, but he's a lyrical genius, so he makes it work. <laughs> <laughs> so, Eminem, the next Chad Kroger. Oh my God. <laughs> Take that back. <laughs> right now. No. Uh, no, I'm not taking it back. <clears throat> yeah. Chris, do you like the Venom song? No. (laughs) But he drops loads of stuff. Liquid Tylenol, Edgar Allan Poe, (laughs) Skiskiska Skeletons. He doesn't actually say Skiskiska Skeletons. I just made that myself. Talks about Hellman's. You You wouldn't know. No one's ever listened to it all the way through. Dr. Riviera. I've got got the lyrics right here. Who who else raps where they talk about filet fish I don't know. Well, I don't either. Ronald McDonald? <laughs> so, but there's a lot in there for people who are probably very familiar with things like Danica Part- Patrick. I don't know who that is. That's Aaron Rodgers' girlfriend. What? Why is she in this rap? I don't know. <laughs> Dang, this is... Right, that's it. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so you have knelt before the Venom song. Well, and Tom Hardy. Uh, uh, and then started questioning the it. <laughs> I don't think I can use it as part of the soundtrack for this podcast, but then is anybody going to care enough to sue us? No. Probably not. 
Jared <laughs> did go for it. <laughs> well, at least someone's listening to it. <laughs> Kneeling before yeah. the Venom song, the only person that likes it that I know of. <sighs> well, that wait, wait, wait till you hear my Kneel Before. <laughs> well, I think you've just set yourself up to go next. Let, 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 let us in. It's the Venom song. <laughs> <laughs> Is it actually? No duplication. Is it actually? <laughs> well... I didn't like it when I first heard it, and then I posted, you know, a, a thousand reaction videos on YouTube and uh, <laughs> slammed Eminem on all of my social media. Uh, but then I reconsidered and was like, actually, I quite like it, and it's maybe the best thing about the film. <laughs> it's because he's a lyrical genius. So I hear. So are you actually just duplicating the deal before? Well, I don't know which yeah, deal but before more enthusiastically because <laughs> I didn't start questioning the lyrics. Well, the we deal before Tom Hardy. Is this not when sort of hostages fall in love with their captors? Is, is it just that Natalie's played it to you too many times and now you've sort of grown to love it? Played the what too many uh, times? We have a symbiotic relationship. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I'll uh, have you know that Hostage is a really underrated movie. Do you have a more... Uh, do you have a non fan Do you have a more unique? Neil before? Uh... Tom Hardy's pretty good. But wait, you said that as well. <laughs> yeah. Riz Ahmed, I like him. Who's Not he? based on this film, surely. But No. Oh, he's the bad guy. But I like his lyrical stylings as well. <laughs> as one half of the Sweatshop Boys. <laughs> oh, so he is. Yeah. Yeah, he is. That's so actually, very, oh my gosh, that's true. It's a very musical a, Neil before this, so he this can, session. So he can hold his own in a rap battle as well. Well, I'd like to see I'd like to see Eminem and him like do like a face off. Like Travolta Cage style. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's the past time they remade that film, isn't it? <laughs> I want everyone look, I want everyone to know that That's maybe even more implausible. The only off. more implausible body Jesus. swap than Cage Travolta. <sighs> Mathers the third and Ahmed. <laughs> Face Off has been getting far too much like conversation time in the last week and a half. I don't know why, but we've talked about it so much. I feel disappointed that there's not like a, a procession of sort of spin-offs or you know sequels to Face Off every couple of years, where just actors just try and pretend to be each other. Um, I'm surprised that that just didn't become a thing. Well, I think it's because they saw the movie and they were like, "What is this? This cannot be bettered." <laughs> maybe we did I mean we watched five minutes of the movie uh, yeah about a week and a half ago and then spent 20 minutes watching the movie sins what's it called cinema sins cinema sins of it which was hilarious I suggest everyone watches it so Neil before cast or Troy <laughs> <laughs> cool Chris are you going to give us a musical um, Neil before or are you going off book no, I, I think I'm going to go off the musical episode now, and I am kneeling before uh, Marvel have announced a Winter Soldier and Falcon TV show. Oh yeah, for their Disney streaming service. Yeah, which yeah. is a bit weird, but I kind of found it funny in Civil War when the two of them were together. There was that one sort of funny scene in the car and a couple of other bits, so yeah, sure, why not? But surely, spoilers for Infinity War, they're both dead. I know, and so is Spider-Man, but, you know, <laughs> I've got to be honest, anything that is being announced at the moment is a bit of a spoiler, but in our heart of hearts, are they dead? Are they, though? Yeah, I think that's a cool idea, just having little mini-series yeah. of these characters. There's a Scarlet Witch one and a Loki one in development mm. as well, so, you know, cool. I, I kind of like the idea of taking all these things off in little bits and going, listen, this is never going to be worth a full-blown film, but we'll give you six episodes or ten episodes or a little mini thing. And I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. I'm up for that. Yeah. I'm here for that, too. It'll just be six episodes of them grieving over Steve Rogers' corpse. <laughs> it will uh, be. Yeah. Craig? Yes? I think I've just remembered what the nail before Rise Against thing is. And I know we go over this every podcast, but it doesn't have to have pertained to what we're podcasting about, does it? It's, no. It shouldn't pertain to what we're podcasting about. That's the point of the feature. <laughs> oh my god, I thought it was supposed to be about what we liked in a brief nope. shell about... Nope. That's what ah, the next agenda item's all about. Right, in that well, case, I The just, Witcher. I've just been <laughs> Is that not just what, Henry Cavill with a white wig? Superman yeah. as The Witcher. I am... Yeah. I feel like this <laughs> happened the last time that we did this. It did. Why didn't you remind me? Do over. 
I thought it was fairly evident. <laughs> but all I talked about was Venom. Yeah. But the the song wasn't part of the agenda, so I allowed it. Well, I'm making it part of the agenda. I want to talk about it later. Well, oh. we've already talked about it, so that's that. Um, yeah. Okay, so I guess it's my turn. Um, yeah. Uh, or do you, do you guys have an opinion on Marvel streaming miniseries for, about big characters? Well, I know you're being all like, oh, but they're dead. Um, I'm just kind of like, yeah, but it depends on what timeline are you living in. I know, and they're they're not going to be dead. It's fine. I, know, I was just being facetious. Back. That's what I was doing. Yeah, and no, I got that. Yeah, that's that's Craig's secret double identity. Indeed. No, I, I accidentally came up with a superhero name this week: the Millennial Falcon. He's just some lazy guy with superpowers who doesn't do anything. <laughs> That's gold. <laughs> and now hundreds of people. Trademark. Um, five people who are listening could steal my idea. You've got, um, haven't you got to post it to yourself or something? I think that's a myth. Any copyright lawyers, get in touch and let me know. After you've, after you've copyrighted my idea and take me to the cleaners. <laughs> that's it, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that, it's that good an idea. But, um, oh my gosh! I've just remembered actually going to the cinema to see Venom, and we do have a lot to talk about. Indeed. So we should we should bash on. So I'm going to. That make more sense in a moment. I'm going to kneel before. Um, uh, there's a bunch of things I could kneel before, but I'm going to kneel before the fact that William Shatner's making a Christmas album. That feels like something we should rise against. No, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> Nonsense. William Shatner's music is creative. It's very creative, and I enjoy it. It's like spoken word versions of like popular songs. So the fact that he's doing a Christmas album, I'm buying it, and I, it will be a Christmas present to everyone I know as well. We, we've not done a podcast for an entire month. There's an entire month's worth of amazing news. <laughs> yes, but I'm still catching up with the entire internet. Over the I can't month. remember any any good things that have happened in the last month. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. It's been a, a a rubbish month. So, that's yeah. that. William Shatner Christmas album. Any other opinions? Um, negative. Uh, Angus, what do you think of a William Shatner Christmas album? Uh... Negative. <laughs> Better be called Kirk the Halls. <laughs> Shatner's now listening. He's like, "Damn it!" <laughs> Wait, is this his first Christmas album? Yes. Ah, oh, in my head, I thought this was like a second or third. <laughs> no, no, no. It's his fourth album, but his first Christmas mm. album. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Well, I guess the Transform Man you do has been. Behem- no, what's it called? Uh, Space Oddity or something. I can't remember what his third one was called. It was a science fiction theme one, though. Uh, and this one, which is his Christmas one. So there we go. <gasps> do you know what I learned this, this week? I learned that you can do a Masters in Dundee on science fiction. And it's like looking at literature, movies and comics. And I was like, how amazing would that be? Sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> I thought it sounded really cool. It does. Okay. It's a lot of work. It would also make that. whoever does it overqualified for this podcast. <laughs> or underqualified. <laughs> it's right <laughs> except doctorates around here. <laughs> oh, that's me out. <laughs> and, and me. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to being sweepingly negative with our Rise Against. Angus, do you have a Rise Against? Uh, world Wrestling Entertainment. <laughs> Just in oh. general. Oh. <laughs> The whole WWE is going down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. All of they're, they're making deals with unnamed Middle Eastern countries. I, I'm going to say no more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Did you hear about that? Wrestling. Well, you so, should hate it even more now because you, they're holding events over there, and it's yeah, they're holding events in Saudi Arabia. It's uh, and it's all dodgy. John Cena's trying to pull out, and they're like, no, and he's like, yeah, because I'm not down with this, and uh, and they're kind of forcing. Forcing them to go. Hmm. <laughs> Dodgy deals. Yeah, I don't like wrestling. Never have. Um, I like some wrestlers, though. I think John Cena's really funny. The Rock, of course. Who can't like The Rock? Uh, Batista. Personal like Batista. favourite. Macho yeah. Man, Randy Bonesaw. Randy Orton, another personal favourite. Hello, Randy. And that's about <laughs> all the ones I know about. 
Oh, there's some guy that's in Arrow. I can't remember his name. Cody someone? I can't remember. Anyway. Uh, he plays a character called Samson in Arrow. Mm. Cody Rhodes, hopefully. Is it Cody Rhodes? He's Could not be. an actor, is he? Well, nah, he's an Depends. adult, so, you know. If you think wrestling's Cody real Rhodes. or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Aren't all wrestlers actors? Um, it's Cody Rhodes. He's an adult, yes. Thank uh-huh. you, thank you. Fast arrow knowledge coming to the fore there. He's quite handsome. He's a, yeah, he's a villain. He's all right. He's, Matches. you know, he fights Oliver a few times. I don't know who that is. The, the Green the, Arrow himself. The orphan Green. from Charles Dickens' <laughs> tale. <laughs> that, that too, yeah. <laughs> I used to get annoyed at the wrestling because it would interrupt Cartoon Network at the end of the day. Ah, <laughs> oh, bummer. Thus rise against. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, Chris, what have you got? I, I kind of feel that I've brought something very weak to this apparent gunfight. Um, I am rising against the PG cut of Deadpool 2. What? An interesting one to rise against. What is yeah. that? Why well, you rise against? I am rising against the fact that it's getting a PG cut. The whole point, the whole thing that they did was, ah, we're not going to do a PG cut, da da da, and then they're like, no, we're going to cash in and do a PG cut. So therefore, rise against. Is that Didn't like Ryan a... Reynolds say there'd be new scenes in it though? So therefore, it's the... probably going to make fun of the fact that it's a PG cut. Um, potentially, but it's still exactly what they said they weren't going to do. We've already had extended cut, extended, extended, extended cut, XXXXX extended cut. Now we're getting PG cut. I kind of have the feeling of you are milking this a lot. Maybe stop. Do you want to hear something weird? I haven't seen the extended cut of Deadpool 2 yet. I've got it. I just haven't seen it. In a dun 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 oh. Just sound do effect, please do that. I get rid of two weeks I get rid of the internet for two weeks and I'm in the twilight zone pretty much. <gasps> where I can't see anything and, and all this stuff. I mean I've got it on Blu ray, so there's no real excuse, but I just scary have to watch door. it. Yeah, the scary door. Um fair enough. I don't know. Um I'll probably see it if it comes out, but yeah, I've already seen Deadpool 2 and with all its swearing and violence intact, so yeah. Fair enough. So, Rise Against China overturning a 25 year ban on importing tiger and elephant parts for medicinal purposes. Let's rise against that because that is brutal. And it could be very devastating to, um, to a lot of sanctuaries. I didn't know anything about this. Well, I think I read it in the news, but I don't know. I don't really know that much about it. Okay, well, maybe this will be nice because I think people should know a bit more about it and uh, and challenge it a little bit more. Um, yeah, there's a lot of terrible things going on in the world right now and a lot of change and a lot of unsettling things. So I think when you see rise against something, I can't help but think of uh, larger, more troubling things than maybe <laughs> uh, pop culture things, I guess. Okay. Do you know I've risen against uh, popcorn in the cinemas on previous podcasts? Just, just <laughs> so you know. Um, just you know the level. That just, just, level just, just, just so you know what the usual tone of the podcast is. Um, yeah. <laughs> is that is that a note for me or for our listeners? Uh, do you know what? Maybe for the listeners, just just yeah. so you know that there's there's cheerier entrances <laughs> into the podcast realm than possibly this one. Yeah. Was it I not mean, cinema adverts at one point as well? I, yeah, I think uh, adverts for the cinema when you're already in the cinema. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was exactly. also risen against at some point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'd like. I mean, next week when we do another one, it's probably going to be different. But at the moment, that's uh, an overriding thing in my head. So. How, how do you feel about late running buses? <laughs> <laughs> Depends where they're going. Yeah, I can't even get her frustrated about that. What about yeah. uh, late running buses driving over the top of pandas? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are pandas doing in the path of the buses? Trying to signal it to stop. Are they real pandas or <laughs> are they kids dressed up as pandas? Well, they were real pandas. Now they're kind of a bit squishy. And warned by children. The world is very, very mucked up. Yeah, I, I, I kind of <laughs> agree with you. I can't, I can't argue against... Um, you, you know, rare creatures being used for medicinal purposes that probably aren't even proven by science. So, yeah, I'll go with that. Now we have all of China against us. Nice job, guys. 
No, not all of China, because just because that is what some few people have chosen to do does not represent the whole country. We know that, remember. Do, do, do we know if this podcast is even getting past the firewall yet? <laughs> Someone out there will be listening. We're with you. Bootleg radio. <laughs> this podcast is getting loaded into this. This this podcast is getting loaded onto USB sticks and fired across Smuggled the great across wall. The border. <laughs> <It's> like, <what? laughs> oh no! Uh, okay. Yeah, let, let's let's say no. That's not happening. No. And uh, well, yeah, you never know. We should give this, a this shout is, out there's going to be a lot of right editing now. to the beginning of this podcast this week, oh, Craig. Yeah. I feel. Yeah, that's no, a, there is yeah. not. No, there's it's going to be edited down to. So we didn't do any rise before <laughs> in the audience this week. Um, we move straight on. Let's move straight on to our feature topic. Everything's peachy. And yeah, happy on North Korea. Okay, so so my rise against is quite an old one, but you know we haven't done a podcast. Craig, since. you've not done your rise against yet. No, I usually go last. <laughs> Because I'm a gentleman. But yeah. Um, I'm going to rise against, this is a fairly old one, the Dark Phoenix trailer. Because it's terrible. What's that? It's the next X Men film. You know, the X Men film that should be subtitled, We Don't Care. Because it's, you know, been bought over by Marvel or bought over by Disney now. So, you know, it doesn't matter because the X Men continuity, as it exists now, is getting thrown out because the X Men will join their friends in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But that doesn't really matter in terms of is does this look like a good film? And the answer is no. It looks a lot like The Last Stand, and we all know how bad that was. Uh, there's just nothing about that trailer that makes me think, wow, I've got to see that. And it just cuts to shots of Jennifer Lawrence and James McAvoy looking bored. Maybe that's what the X-Men do now, you know, now that all their friends are dead. There's nothing really much to do. It just looks dull. It doesn't look like a great trailer. It uh, also, like you say, it's kind of one of these films now that you feel anything that happens in it, it just isn't of any consequence because it's about to be rebooted anyway. Also, it was supposed to be coming out Valentine's Day 2019 and it immediately got pushed back to June, like a day after the trailer dropped. So, what does that tell you? Not Probably a something along along the lines of let's gauge the fan reaction oh hell and then moved quick on. guys more reshoots <laughs> and then yeah. Jennifer Lawrence says I'm not coming back for this and then yes we're just let's be lose. honest though like I think the X-Men movies have always been very hit and miss like but even before you know this change so there are quite a few I think there's more good ones than there are bad ones though. like one and know. two one and two is good the second Wolverine is a good film the uh Last Wolverine film, of course, is a good film. First Class is outstanding. Uh, Days of Future Past is pretty good. What's so the rule? Apocalypse... All the even-numbered ones. I don't know. <laughs> I mean... Well, growing up, of all the superhero movies, X-Men was the one that I gave like the least cares about. I just thought there was too many of them. Too many X-Men and too many X-Men movies. There aren't that many. They were kind of some of the I first. Like I think I've said time. this on... I think I've said this on another podcast. They were kind of one of the first to break through when all the superhero movies were kicking back off again. So I kind of give them a little bit of slack. Plus, it brought us Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Mm. Hugh Jackman is Wolverine. Thank you, Scrubs, JD. Say that all the time. Yeah. So that's that. X-Men Dark Phoenix. Or it's not even called X-Men Dark Phoenix. It's called Dark Phoenix. With Phoenix, like X. Like yeah, the X, X is, it is it like legally distinct Dark Phoenix? Uh, I don't know. I think it was still an X Men film. They just dropped the X Men moniker. Ah, so, yeah. So not legally distinct. No, just not called X Men. I'm not Maybe sure why. They're trying to move away from that because there are too many X Men movies. Shall we move on then? So we're here to talk about Venom, that thing we've already kind of talked about. So. Let's get into the spoiler-free thoughts. What did we think without t- ex- spoiling it for everybody, if it they can indeed be spoiled? Chris, nominate you. Go first. Um, do you know what? Venom's one of these films that I really didn't have a lot of anticipation for when it came out. I think I've said on previous podcasts multiple times how much... And in future I'll, podcasts. And, and in future podcasts, <laughs> strangely, uh, how much... <laughs> Uh, I'm. I wasn't particularly looking forward to this film. It just didn't catch me in any way. I, I came out the other side of it thinking, "Oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be." 
uh, like sort of coming out from the dentist after not having your teeth drilled. You know what I mean? It's one of those kind of things. You come off and go, no, nah, that wasn't that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought they were going to reach in with pliers and pull one out, and it's uh, it's not that bad. It had some funny moments in it. It had some little character bits that I kind of liked. However, um, not great. It kind of feels like a film that if it had come out 10 years, maybe more ago, it would have gone down a lot better than it did. Or it has. Yeah, that's pretty close to how I feel about it. Um, I actually enjoyed it more than I thought I was going to, but it was a dismal marketing campaign that just made it seem like it was going to be unwatchably terrible. But I kind of liked it. I think Tom Hardy did the best he could with the ropey material he was given. It's a mm-hmm. bit disjointed in what it's trying to be about. It never quite settles on anything. But there's some funny moments. Um, some less funny moments. Yeah, it's just one of those. If, Like you said, if it come out the same summer as Ghost Rider, for example, it'd probably feel right at home in that kind of time period. feels very dated. You know, you've kind of had the um, you've had ten years of the Marvel Cinematic Universe churning out sort of quality films that you know that that follow things like structure and character development and plot, and uh, then you get this, <laughs> and it just it just feels like quite a lazy throwback, all told. Yeah, not in a particularly like a nostalgic way, throwing back to those films either. It's just yeah, like you say, a bit lazy some of it the way it's done. Yeah. Angus, what did you think? Uh, Venom, officially known as the Republic of Venom, is a country at the southern end of the Arabian Peninsula. No, it's not. Oh, no, that's Yemen. <laughs> Sorry, still got my mind on <laughs> politics. Um, <laughs> I was like, legit, like, oh my God, is it actually <laughs> I I thought I had uh, very low expectations going in, and those were met. Um <laughs> Uh, no, slightly I think, exceeded by low expectations. <laughs> I yeah, didn't I didn't need this film and didn't come out thinking that it was all that necessary. I thought that the tone was kind of weird throughout. It felt as if it had been kind of patched together from different edits or uh, scripts because um, some of it was quite funny, but some of it was quite um, serious. I don't know if that was what they were going for, but it felt a bit imbalanced to me. I wanted to like it more than I did, I think. Um, I liked Tom Hardy to begin with, and I don't know, as it, my complaint is always the same with these things, as it kind of descends into a CGI slugfest at the end, it just <laughs> loses my interest, So, uh, and that is exactly what happened here. Fair one. Natalie, what did you think? Kind of similar, I think, to you guys, although... I went in with low expectations because I didn't really know much about it anyway. And then, yeah, like same as class, I really, I really wanted to enjoy it. Like I really wanted it to be good. Um, but I was confused a lot of the time because obviously the Venom that I know primarily comes from like the Sega Mega Drive game that I had <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> and then also Topher Grace's like an interpretation of Venom as well because we've already met this character so I was a bit confused as to what point we were going to meet him it's like this origins of him like it's just really it's just really strange so no and, 90s Spider-Man cartoon or uh, what was the other thing that you might have seen him in uh, <clears throat> the, like, the PS1 I mean, Spider-Man game that was the other thing nah like I didn't I didn't have that game on PS1 like we're going old old school for the game <laughs> that I had like but it's just really weird because Tom Hardy it's like you said did the best he could with what he had to work with um, and sometimes it just wasn't good but there are things that I liked about it but I think the kind of rush a lot of uh, character development and um, like they seem to have left out some some key points that I think would have endeared us a bit more to the characters. And that's another thing, you kind of you kind of the whole time you're like, am I supposed to like him? Because he's supposed to be this bad guy, but it's like, it, is this supposed to be spoiler free? Yes. yes. Uh, then I'll leave it. <laughs> <laughs> 
he's think, supposed I, to be this bad guy and maybe a bad guy. <laughs> I think you've uh, I think you've made your position fairly clear. So okay. that's cool. Hi. We can uh, dis- we can bond with the spoiler creature mm. and become mm. something greater. Or I don't know. I don't know what this analogy is. Are we going to do that? Are we ready Yay. to do that? I just yeah. want to say I'm slightly uncomfortable with merging with everybody. If that's what's, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. Um, as long as we don't float around like a turd on the wind, we'll be okay. My tofu is. <laughs> okay, shall we spoil? Yes, let's. We are Venom. Cool. We've achieved spoiler osis. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need a wash. <laughs> it's a bad pun. It's a really bad pun. It's not even a pun. It just, <laughs> oh, it just, you tried. It's, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's rubbish. Okay, we have That's another new feature. Now. Well, it's newish. We tried it last time, and I just shoved it in at a random point. But now it has a Ugh. point in the structure. <laughs> yeah, well, we're back to this again. So we are engaging with our listeners, such as they are, mm-hmm. whoever they are. And mm-hmm. we have went out and looked for some questions that they might want to ask us about Venom because mm. we're clearly experts on this. Yeah. So we have four, I am led to believe. I have three, Chris has one. Is that right? I do have one. Cool, okay. Well, we'll start off with Jordan McIntyre. Uh, he says, why do you think this film is making so much money, especially if lots of people are slamming it? Is it making money? Yeah, it just cleared $500 million. Yeah, but how much did it? You don't cost consider to make that much. You don't get out of bed for less than a billion, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was quite a cheap film. I mean, unless you couldn't yeah, tell you can by tell. Like, watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think it was like some, the budget was somewhere like north of just north of a hundred something million. So ah, cheap, yes. Yeah, so it's well, you know, cheap for one of the typical these indie of movie. I mean, yeah. you got to ask how much of that is tax. Uh, just how much of that is lobsters that Tom Hardy was eating. <laughs> it is a good question because I am surprised that it's taken that much money. I really thought, I mean, yeah, I think I was believing that not many people had actually gone to see it. Yeah. Well, it's making loads of money. It's like the biggest October opening ever, you know, or, or something like that. But what was uh, the drop off my- after the? reviews started coming out nothing like second week it still nailed it it still did really well at the box office so. well to be fair i mean it's tom hardy it's got a great soundtrack <laughs> <laughs> whether, it, whether it, yeah it does yeah whether it deserves it or not is academic i suppose but the the thing is a lot of people are slating it but the, there's almost like a the, there's a weird sort of fan backlash to it it's one of those things that it's one of those films where the critics don't know what they're talking about sort of thing. As if film critics are this hive mind that believe something, you know, the, 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 that, are, that have to report a certain thing about a film. So you've got a lot of people that went out probably trying their best to love it and then ended up loving it or saying that they loved it. And it's just to kind of stir up that controversy of the, the backlash about, you know, the, these critics who get paid to write about stuff. I'm not one of these people, by the way, because I don't get paid to write about stuff. <laughs> or slam in this film. I gave it a neutral, sort of lukewarm review anyway. It was like three stars for me. So, Do you think Tom Hardy's a big two? enough draw to pull in the casuals? No, I wouldn't say he's like a, you know, he's a box office winner. You know, like, I mean, he's good. I think people recognise that he's good, but I don't think he's like this household name. You know, he's not a Tom Cruise or a, a Will Smith, is he? You know? What? Yes, he is a household name. Is Will also, Smith even a household name anymore? No, well, he was. You know. um, Tom Hardy, I think, is that kind of person where I think there will be people who are going, right, I'm going to go see this movie, and their girlfriends are going to go, oh, I'll come with you. See, I'm not sure he's as well either. known as you think he is. Yeah, he is. Hmm. I, think, I think he's well enough known. I mean, personally, I think it's just arrived at the right kind of time in between other superhero films in sort of action-y films that it's been there for people to watch. It's not really been up of another against another film of the same mm. type within yeah. close proximity. And I Is think it, that's why it's, it's done all right and it'll be doing all right on a sort of longer uh, release than normal. It won't be that everyone sort of flocks to see it at once. It's the fact that dribs and drabs of people have gone to the cinema and went, oh, Venom, I've not really seen that yet. Yeah, I suppose we'll go and see that. You know, it's it's because a lot of the films that have been out are not sort of independent films, but are maybe smaller scale, not as action driven. Hmm. 
Well, uh, Neil before blog gave it two stars. I, I've kind of forgotten even what I had to say about it. So that was, <laughs> two uh, stars. Two stars. I was wow. going to give it three, but I was like, it does not. Also, three. like, I just want to go back to this whole Tom Hardy household name thing. Like, he's been in some massive movies, and he's been like, he has. But the thing is, this is you know back to the MCU, but they. Someone did a poll on audiences to to think of, you know, the actors that people recognise the names and things like Chris Evans and so on. You know, even though they recognise the characters, they didn't recognise them as actors. So it'd be like, so I, I think Tom Hardy's one of those actors where it's like, what do you think of Tom Hardy? And they're like, what would I have seen him in? And then someone will say, legend. Oh yeah, right, cool, like him. Was he not in like Bronson? Yeah, but again, Bronson Massive. like Bronson was sort of a critical darling, but I don't think it was, you know. I don't think it was earth shattering in terms yeah, of but like he's been audience. In, but he's been in like a mix, I think, of both. Like he's been in like critically acclaimed movies, and he's been in Inception, other things, Dark Knight Rises, Star Trek yeah. Nemesis. Isn't he Bane? He is. Right. He is Bane. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Zordon, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't digitally altered. I just covered my face with my hands. <laughs> Genius. Um... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, he was in Star Trek Nemesis, which is uh, interesting. If you ever watch Star Trek Nemesis to watch Tom Hardy trying to be a clone of Captain Picard, then uh, you'll love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um Yeah, I'm not. I, I'm not so sure he's well known. That well known, but you know, maybe he is. I'm. I'm happy to be proven wrong on that one. Well, I um, think he is. So that's my that's my hypothesis. Tom Hardy. People might not have been aware where this kind of fit in amongst all of the rest of the superhero movies. If even if they knew he was a Marvel character, would they be like, okay, I'm casual enough that I have been to see some Avengers films and maybe I like Iron Man, uh, so let's let's go and see Venom because where does that fit in this whole thing? And then they're like, wait a minute, nowhere. <laughs> do you think, um, do you think oh, putting in association with Marvel in the trailer got people in the cinema? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because I, you see Marvel, you're like, wait, MCU, that seems to track. I don't I don't think the people who are going, oh, I've seen Iron Man and none of the others are going to be like, oh, I'm going to go see Venom. I think it's the people who are like, yeah, everyone loves Spider-Man. Those people Spider-Man. almost don't exist anymore. No, everyone loves <laughs> Spider-Man. Like, we've talked about this. You love Spider-Man. I think I'm like the only person who has ever differed in that. J. Jonah Jameson does not like Spider-Man. <laughs> who? Who? doesn't matter okay, anyway. the publisher of the daily Bugle. <laughs> oh he hates spider-man <laughs> but he wants pictures of him so there we go tw- so, yeah there we go anyway everyone loves spider-man everyone goes oh venom venom doesn't spider-man i'm gonna go see venom because they think it's part of the whole spider-man and then everyone's like where's spider-man what's this got to do with spider-man and then we're like oh it's an origins movie so where in this film or in the marketing of this film, do you ever get the idea that Spider-Man will have anything to do with this? Because it's Venom. Yeah, but most people... He, you know, His whole like, appearance is based on Spider-Man. Yeah, but also, we, um, we don't... Well, we know that, right? But there's so many people that won't have heard of Venom and won't know what the connection is. There'll yeah, be so many people that only go, know Spider-Man, Spider-Man through the... But he doesn't... Not in the film, he doesn't. But he's been... I mean, Venom's appeared in Spider-Man movies already. So he's appeared course, in one of them that... You know, you've got there's a big generational gap between people that what you know between certainly young people that will watch Spider Man three, uh, or that will watch the MCU and Spider Man three. Like the 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 pre MCU Spider Man films have probably haven't been watched by a, a vast chunk of people at this point. So I think they have because they're so hilarious. Slow plus, tear for Tobey Maguire. Yeah. Plus, at Aww. no point in Spider Man three is he ever referred to as Venom. Is that correct? Yeah, because nothing will rhyme with it. <laughs> it was a uh, Snow Patrol that did the song for that one. They couldn't find a rhyming <laughs> couplet for. <laughs> oh my god! Wow. Oh, yeah, jeez. Um, That's I, something yeah. we didn't talk about during our Spider-Man Three podcast. The Snow Patrol <laughs> song. Oh my god! Do you think Eminem helped Venom be the movie that it is, like getting the crowds? Because <laughs> I think the biggest promotional material for this is the fact that Eminem dropped a new album. And it's got a song yeah. for the movie on it. It was a massive release. And it was a huge release, and I think people are going to be like, news. they're going to be singing Venom, nom, 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 nom. and they're going to be like, all right, I'm going to oh, see no, that no, movie. No. <laughs> but there's um, 
yeah, there's a lot of like, I mean, there's nothing objective about it, but there's a lot of terrible films that make a lot of money, and no one can figure out why. I don't think Venom I think it's is an, terrible. I think it's an amalgamation of all of those things, like yeah. we mentioned. So the the marketing, the soundtrack, the people who are in it, mm. the fact that Marvel films have been doing really well recently, and mm. uh, you know, it's like all kind of leads what, up to this. What Chris said. Like, and let's not forget word of mouth. It. Let's not forget word of mouth. You should go see Venom. It's not as bad as it looks. <laughs> <laughs> that that'll be on the poster. It'll be on Hopefully the so, cover. Yeah. Not yeah. not as bad as it looks. <laughs> Bleeding cool, or whoever says that. You know. What was the certificate for this film? Fifteen, 15 here, PG thirteen yeah. in the US. Right. So, like all those kids who need to get their parents to take them to the cinema. That's like double the ticket price because you've got mm, a, a, a parent yeah. who's completely Clever disinterested marketing. having to take them along. Yeah. And be like be my the dad after that... um, after the Power Rangers movie. Like, oh, I, wish he hadn't, I wish I hadn't seen that. You know, but, but I was loving it. <laughs> be... but, but think of all the money they lose from all those little kids on top of each other's shoulders and big long coats <laughs> trying to get in as an adult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they, they build that into their <laughs> calculations. <Yeah. laughs> Um, or all the kids that buy tickets for whatever animated Drek, Drek is out that week and go and sneak into the Venom screening instead. Yeah, I it would maybe I wonder what it would be like if Venom had been like an eighteen because there's some really brutal goings on. There's a suggestion movie. of brutal goings on, but never quite the. the like when they're like, "Oh my god, he just ate his head." Yeah, but you don't see that. Yeah, you do. You see him eat someone's head. You see, you see a bit of blood splatter, and you see the sort of shadow of someone getting devoured, but you don't That's really funny. see, you don't really see anything happening mm-hmm. that way. Well, there's it's a like, bit at the end where he eats that guy in the convenience store, and he completely disappears in the next shot. Oh yeah, I think I read something <laughs> about that. Like, there's not no trace of him. Yeah, yeah. So. We don't know, I guess, is the short answer. It's just good question, that? Jordan. Good question, Jordan. Thank you, Jordan. Where does all that material... Oh, that was a question, that's right. What was it? Well, how did it make so much money? And we're back at the beginning of the question. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we I move on to the next the question? Was. Yeah. And uh, we actually have uh, an extra question that I've forgotten about, so that's cool. Yeah, I'll <laughs> that in. <laughs> okay, so the next question is from mm-hmm. Isaac. Oh, you know, hi, someone Isaac. who's on this podcast who's... Whose idea was this podcast? Where yeah, where, where, where is Isaac on the podcast that he created? He is visiting his family. I'll Did he not have that. internet at his family? I, I don't know. He might be on a train <laughs> right now. He's so slacking, he slacking off as Isaac. Yeah. Turn up for podcast. Hello, Isaac. I'll pushing for this podcast but, too. But he was asking, what is our dream casting for all these Spider-Man villain solo films that are going to come out that don't feature Spider-Man? So we've already got Morbius, who's Jared Leto, and I can't wait for that. <gasps> Uh, Craven has been announced um, and you know there's just some fun ideas of, of what you could have you could have a Doctor Octopus solo film that has nothing to do with Spider-Man who's ever played Mysterio? Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal will be playing Mysterio <gasps> in the next Spider-Man movie you're loving that oh my Jared God. Leto Jake Gyllenhaal combo <laughs> I feel like I'm in, like I feel like I'm becoming a Spider-Man villains fan oh wait I think it was that already this is amazing well so, I don't know who I would like to play Craven because I don't care about that character. Who's Craven? He's Craven the Hunter. Is he the one that lives in. Um, where does he live in the game? Elm Street. <laughs> anyway, where does he live? I don't know what game you're referring to. <laughs> where does he to, live? So. You're the talking one from the specifically Sega Mega Drive. about the Mega Drive. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> there was the Bell Tower, the Sand Pit, the Sewers. Um, probably not, the trippy world that, that Mysterio was in. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Craven the Hunter wants to hunt Spider-Man because he wants a challenge and that's it. But he won't be wanting to hunt Spider-Man because he'll be in a film where there will be no Spider-Man. So, I don't know. I reckon they'll hire someone like John Cena or something like that. No, no, no. I don't even know anything about this and I'm disagreeing with that. I Batista. No, I think it won't be somebody that big and muscly. It'll be somebody um, tall. Go on. And built, but not um, not like humongous. Someone tall. <gasps> Keanu Reeves. The big show. The big show. <laughs> We're just. Can, just can it's Keanu just all going to be wrestling. Be <laughs> no, he can't. Why not? See someone else. No, it's just he, I don't think he could be a good. I don't think anybody would be a good Craven. So I don't think it's okay. possible to do a good Craven. I think he's a terrible character. If we can get Nicolas Cage and, uh, and Keanu Reeves on board. Then I'm sold. 
What, what about the guy? Octopus? Oh, you have a suggestion for Craven? Yeah, I was thinking uh, the guy that played the hunter in the first Jumanji film. He's a bit old, isn't he? <laughs> he, he, is, he is a bit old. He is a bit old, but I think it would be a different, it would be a different oh, no, style. It's, not him. it's the guy who's the actual dad. With like, the massive mustache and like a musket. That, that's what I want as Craven the Hunter. <laughs> Fetch me musket. You know, I think if, I think if they're going to do them different like they've done in this film, why not rock the boat a bit? <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Um, there, there's a villain called The Spot, and he's a. Uh, He's rubbish, but he makes little portals. But he's rubbish. So that be you know, like John C. Riley or something. No, they would. They would. I think they would probably like. They'd probably take it far too seriously and try and get Fassbender or someone involved. <gasps> He'd be Mysterio if it wasn't Jake Gyllenhaal. Well, it's Jake Gyllenhaal, so you know. <laughs> I'm happy with that. Yeah. Uh, Doc Ock. I actually would love Paul Giamatti to be Doc Ock. Why can't Metal Streak mm, be one of them? Too rhinoy. <laughs> too too rhinoy. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think he'd be a great Doc Ock. When I was actually playing the new Spider-Man game on the PS4, I was thinking Paul Giamatti. Going Jim Carrey in full Edward Enigma here. No, he doesn't do that. <laughs> What's the name of that guy that I like, the name I always forget, and he's really cute, and he was in um, My Name is Earl, and he's Phoebe's brother. What's his name? Giovanni, Giovanni Ribisi. Ribisi. <laughs> Get him involved! <laughs> Get him involved. <laughs> yeah. I like him a lot, but I just always forget his name. As Craven the Hunter, sold. <laughs> right, good. Make it so. Yeah. Uh, there will be a Norman Osborn solo film that would be just some kind of business drama. Mm. Just some kind Boring. of boardroom drama. It would just be <laughs> terrible. Tom, Tom Hanks. Fine. There we go. Tom, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks as Norman Osborn. <laughs> yes. Oh, that'd be brilliant. Especially when he becomes the Green Goblin and then has no one to fight. But no, we've already got the Green Goblin. No, we don't. The four, right? I'm okay. something of a scientist myself. That was a that was a two universes <laughs> ago. Oh, I can't keep up, Spider Man. And we we had a Norman Osborn in the Amazing Spider Man as well, in the Amazing Spider Man Two. Can Chris I, Cooper. can mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. can they mm-hmm. cast me as one of the villains? Because I feel like I detest Spider Man enough that I could really um, get behind the role. <laughs> uh, Sure. I say that, but I do like the new Spider-Man. But then you'll find yourself in a universe where Spider-Man doesn't exist, and you're like, ah, oh, what did I do? Yeah, your and life's I'll go work is complete. Ah. <laughs> Before she even began. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the Millennial Falcon, if he doesn't do anything, he can't mess up. Aww, oh, sadly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the other one that Isaac suggested was a young Aunt May film, which is I don't know. It's just some. A young. <laughs> just film about young Aunt May. <laughs> oh, that should be the title as well. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. My thinking is Taylor Swift. Why not? Why don't they just do a Who Killed Uncle Ben? Why does anyone care about these people if the their nephew's not Columbo. even around? <laughs> in, the, in the style of Columbo. Could be like a. Get Peter Falk back from the dead. Maybe he's a well, zombie. Well, see, um, see, uh. Uncle Ben, or he would just be known as Ben because he's no one's uncle yet. Uh, he would be in the Young Aunt May film, and it would be about the meeting and getting together, and about how much, how very much alive Ben is by the end of it. Nah, do you like a who killed Uncle Ben in the style of Ghost, the musical? <laughs> I'm thinking like CSI Spider Man. You could spin it out as a TV show. Yeah. 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 Christmas special. Then you have Law and Order Spider Man towards the end, you know, once they're all processes got in court, you know. It's like, you know, I, I think this whole Disney streaming service has got uh, a long way to go. Yeah. Making a Spider Man. <laughs> <laughs> so, who would you cast as Young Aunt May? Anyone else? I mean, I say Taylor Swift, but I don't know. Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage. Idris Elba. Idris Elba. <laughs> Yeah, we've covered all the basics. Yeah. Yeah. Stop, 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 type, stop typecasting Aunt May, that's it. Yeah. I think it's <laughs> time that Idris Elba had a turn. She doesn't have to be a young woman, she could be a middle aged black man, why not? Exactly, no, that's forward thinking. <laughs> Don't call him middle aged. I'm offended by that. But he is middle aged. <laughs> He's uh, Denzel um, Washington. Oh. <laughs> so that's too far. Liam Neeson. Um, I knew he'd get mentioned. Get him to. Fu- <laughs>
Yeah. What's um, the next question? Swip, swip. Well, that was just uh, we're on the casting thing, but if no one else had anything else to say about Spider-Man villain solo film casting, then we can move on to the next question. Thanks for your question, Isaac. Yeah, thanks, <laughs> Isaac, for not being here. Yeah, we hope to idea. talk with you soon. Okay, so the next one is, uh, unfortunately, the question that always gets asked. So, Ronnie, uh, as asked us, how does he go to the toilet and where does it all go? Is this yeah. Ronnie asking for himself? I don't know. <laughs> Ronnie, you need help. <laughs> how, does, how does Venom go to the toilet? Oh, Venom. Yeah. He's an alien. We are not familiar have... with alien practices. Well, one of the um, one of the definitions of life is that they excrete. So, you know. He Ooh. just reaches a tendril out into the nearest midden. and uh... See, what I'm thinking is he can, I mean, when he has a host, the host can then use a toilet. Yeah, he uses, he uses Tom Hardy. But he also consumes like massive quantities of like People. energy. Human beef. <laughs> yeah, because like, um, where does that whole person go when he's like? How does the mass work? Is it that inside? Is it like in in Discworld where you go inside like Death's house, but it's much larger inside than it is from the outside because of like Raj physics? Is that the, Tom like Hardy's the TARDIS. body? Well, the symbiote's able to fit in between a tiny dog and a human male and a human female. So, you know, like he, he can he can be whatever size he he wants to be somehow. Like, no, it's but like I mean, like, but all the matter that he's consumed, how does he condense that down to? Um, do you know what I mean? If he consumes That's, a whole a whole person, it's like a snake with a, Hardy, the shape of a goat inside. But then he moves to a dog. <laughs> how does he take that? How does he take that matter with him, or does that stay in Tom Hardy? And then does that mean that Tom Hardy has the equivalent of a whole person's I, matter inside of him? I I think it it melts down somehow and converts into energy. There we go. Let's like just power like, blasts or something. Yeah, sure. Why not? I've got no idea. It's it's film and TV science. I've got no idea. And Tom Hardy is just a toilet, as far as Venom's concerned. No, he's not. They become friends. You can be yeah. friends with your toilet. <laughs> yeah, he Something wasn't calling him a loser. And... <laughs> he wasn't calling him a loser, he was calling him a loo. He just sort of added yeah, extra uh, layers. Yeah. On my planet, I'm kind of a loo. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of a loo, sir. Yeah. Um, so is that us on the poop question? Um, I think that's as long as we want to dwell on it. Yeah, is it much. is it though that he the next one is so much Tom worse. Hardy's asshole? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Then the yeah. answer is that for whoever asked that question. Thank you, Ronnie. Thank you, Ronnie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the next one is from another contributor to the podcast, Kat. She has asked, and this question's horrifying, especially since I did some research on it yesterday. Can't wish I had it. So this is the exact wording. On a scale from definitely not to hell yeah, where do you all stand on the monster f- her spectrum? What? What? Craig, you're up first. <laughs> Wait, you did research on this? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what it was, so I had to find out. What is uh, it? Like, what? It, how hot it is, is the that, monster? It is that on the internet, there are people yeah. that have gone on record saying that they are aroused by Venom in some way and then go into detail about what they would like Venom to do to them Wait, and so how does the zero to how does the definitely not to yeah how does well, that would you are you here for that sort of thing or is it not for you I think is, is what's being asked alright let think, me go on the record of going not for me thank you <laughs> yeah it's not for me either I was reading up on it yesterday and I was horrified and like doing it with Play-Doh or Silly Putty no thank you <laughs> Mm. With teeth, by the way, well, it's got there's, teeth. There's all sorts of there's all sorts of theories on certain things that Venom could do. Some people quite like the idea of uh, of uh, being involved with Venom while Eddie Brock was asleep because it was the danger of being caught by Eddie Brock. <laughs> Man, you've crossed over. <laughs> wow. I, I'd probably let Venom take me on a nice date, but when it when it came to sharing an ice cream and just seeing how he was going at it with that tongue I'd be like that's it Venom no more 
I think uh, people are into the tongue as well. I think yeah, I did, nah, as soon as I saw that, nah, you're not coming near me with that. <laughs> no idea where it's been. Yeah. <laughs> he just gets a triple scoop ice cream and devours it in yeah. one lick. That's all it would take for me to, you know. That's no it. I'm out. I'm out. Yep. That's... <laughs> you can say no at any time, and I'm saying no. <laughs> Natalie, do you have thoughts on this spectrum? I do. I do. I can. I get it. I understand why um, why people think that. But then I've also seen The Shape of Water. Were there were there illustrations that were like Venom, but as the monster from The Shape of Water? I think if I dug further into it than I wanted to, there would have been. But I, I think she's asking you to send her your links to these. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I can do my it. own research. Just Google it. Yeah, yeah. Um, that is interesting. And also, like, I imagine, I mean, how have we never had this question before? Because we haven't talked about Venom before. Oh, he is well, a we sexy have. beast. So, like, <laughs> I understand. Come on, like, when, when Venom takes on um, the female form, were you not, like, I'm down the climb? No, I was more. I was more. Uh, I was just that didn't cross my mind. I was just like, yeah, we'll get to that later. We'll get to the reasons that I was annoyed. Well, I wasn't annoyed. We'll get to the reasons I was confused by that moment later on. Mm. <laughs> my head's gone completely blank. Who played that again? Michelle Williams. That's right, and I really like her. Or a rendering that. software, in that in that particular case. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So thanks, Cat, for that question. I want to know what Kat, Thank you, Kat thinks about this. I want to know her answer. So. Ambush her when she's next on our podcast. and then we'll yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you want an audio thing of a Kat's opinion? No, I want to, I want to bring it up another time. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, you're listening to Triple X-Men. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you waited to say that? That was straight off the dome. Straight off the dome. As soon as can, that you, can you imagine? What, what about like a Venom chat line? You know, like one of these sort of uh, <laughs> premium rate phone lines. Call 1 800 Venom. Yeah, call 1 800 Venom. Uh, you know. I hope Marvel are listening because this is something they should employ <laughs> for their next outing. And it's not Marvel, is it? Who is it that did this? It's presented Sony. by Marvel. Sony. Brought to you by Sony, Sony, Sony of yeah. In association with Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was um, that was my four questions that I had. Yeah. Um, Chris, what is the question that you got a hold of? Okay, this one is from Suzanne. Suzanne says, "Hello, team. Uh, Venom has always been portrayed as a Hi. villain. Have they turned him into a hero totally?" I'm going to say no, because he's very much an anti-hero in this film. Although, no, he's not he really that guys. either. But he's not, um, he's not actually always a villain in the comics. Eddie Brock went after Spider-Man because he hates Spider-Man, but he yeah. becomes like the Punisher uh, eventually. So he goes around just killing people that, that do bad things. You know, like he starts to do in this film. Uh, so, no, he's not a villain. Totally. Yeah, and he doesn't I'm, hate Spider-Man because he has no idea who he is. This yeah. is what really confused me about the whole movie because the whole time I was like, I I had one idea of what Venom was and who he was as a character. You were hitting C on the joypad to throw web at Venom and you're just like, why isn't this working? My idea of who he was didn't match with the story that was portrayed and... And I really struggled to accept it because I was like, when's this part, like, when's it going to happen that we see this side of him? When, how does he, and I, the whole time I was like, how does he become a baddie when it seems like the host is questing for truth and justice and loses a lot trying to bring that to the front? And it seems like Venom gets easily persuaded to just consume bad guys. So I was like, how. I left being like, how does he become such a bad guy in Spider-Man? Because you're not left with that impression when you leave the movie. You're like, he's, well, he it seems like he should be a hero. In all versions of Venom that exist because of Spider-Man, you have the fact that Eddie Brock hates Spider-Man 
Why? Uh, because in most versions he ruins his life or career in some way, or Eddie Brock thinks that Spider-Man's ruined his life or career in some way. Well, in this origin story, he ruined it himself, or his fiance did. didn't stand by yeah. him, so... Yeah, I mean, that's a separate thing. I'm talking about the sort of original yeah. villainous version. So what you've got is Eddie Brock has a chip on his shoulder because he hates Spider-Man for the reasons that, that I stated. And then the symbiote doesn't much like Peter Parker either because Peter tried to kill him or kill it by getting rid of it. So what you have is you have two entities that bond over their hatred of one person. Mm. And then go on a revenge mission. But once they kind of get over it, they decide to go back to whatever it was that Eddie Brock is supposed to stand for in the first place, which is a later edition. And he goes and essentially becomes the Punisher with spider powers. That first part sounds like quite a good basis for a character, but if you don't have that... Well, then you've got this film. Then you've got this. <laughs> with the confusing... Oh, it's... I don't know if he's a goodie or a baddie or... Yeah. I'm sorry, Susanna, I'm just confused. Yeah, I mean, see, my my thing is, I agree with Craig, it's like in the comics and in other cartoons. things, in cartoons and such, he's not always a villain. He normally starts as a bit of a villain and then ends up a bit of an anti-hero. And in this, in this, he's just confusing because... There are a lot of dead SWAT team members out there at the moment. <laughs> um, so there's no way you can go, well, no one was harmed in the making of this. Um, so, yeah, there's <laughs> it's not ideal um, the way they've, they've put him here. And then Venom's, you know, if you take Venom as a separate character from Eddie, goes through a apparent complete mindset change. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, in, without any explanation. Well, yeah. a two-sentence thing that I'm like... Why not give her a, give yeah. us a visual? I've, I've I've looked into your head and I've decided I'm not going to kill all humans now. I'm going to kill all my people because that's what I do now. What are you yeah. talking about? He climbed a tall building and saw a bridge. That was enough. To yeah, yeah, there, that was it. That was that was that meant to be the moment. Was that the the moment there? Well, I everyone was, just kind of flips on this, where you know, like mm-hmm. Michelle Williams sees Venom Eddie doing horrific things, and then when she needs to go and find him, she's just like, oh yeah, hell bond with that symbiote that'll be fine and that's kind of where i'm confused by a lot of it because pe- people behave very strangely you know they 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 witness things or they see things or they don't really kind of have any kind of consistent approach to any of it we're just desensitized by everything <laughs> no um so so i guess the answer to the question is this film doesn't really do that but venom isn't typically just a villain in the comics or other adaptations he's much more than that I didn't know Spider-Man. that. Like it's weird. I didn't. I didn't know that about that character. So it sounds like the film has been pretty faithful to how he's portrayed in all of these things. But for me, the portrayal that I've ever been acquainted with is that he's a villain, and so it was different to yeah. what I expected this to well, be. Well, in in broad strokes, if you look at the Spider-Man three version of the character, he's very much the the version I was talking about. Eddie Brock hates Peter Parker. Yeah. Uh, and the symbiote also hates Peter Parker. Because you know, try to kill it with a loud noise makes mm-hmm. you makes you hate someone. They mm-hmm. come together, and their shared hatred of Peter Parker means that they have the wherewithal to go try kill him. Yeah, yeah. But in the comics, eventually he decides that you know what, Peter Parker ain't worth it, and then he goes off and, and does his own thing. He just decides to get away from him. It's the next best thing. But um, and then eventually you get sort of different hosts for Venom. Flash Thompson being one of them. Uh, some military guy, uh, Scorpion at one point, which was a bit weird. So you know, like the the Venom's motivations can change depending on who he mm. it bonds with, I guess. I really, but, I really like the character. Um, yeah, I really like that. I just, I wish the movie had been better. And if you reach him on the Sega Mega Drive in the boss battle, press up, down, left, right, start any together, he flips and becomes a goodie. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you know, essentially what happens in this <laughs> film, I guess. <laughs> it was weird, though. They should have had at least, like, one sunset or sunrise scene where they sat down together and decided that the world is good. It's like, you know, like, oh, now that I know that love exists, you should be saved. Like the fifth element. Yeah. So, Suzanne, hopefully that answers your question. I'm not convinced it does, but hopefully it does. Thank you, Suzanne, for the question. 
Chris, hit the music. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> I want that to be the closing yeah. song for this. <laughs> so, yeah, we've already started talking about Eddie Brock as a character. Um, <laughs> Eddie Brock. I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that guy, Tom Hardy. <laughs> um, I mean, I put in the, the show, or I put in the agenda, his arc. I wouldn't say he really has one. He'd, I wouldn't say that Eddie actually learns anything. I mean, he goes and, you know, he gets um, assigned the story of going to speak to Riz Ahmed and then he goes to his company and his boss somehow sends him because even though he knows that Eddie's a loose cannon and will probably make an arse of it in some way by saying something that isn't what they want from a just a, a puff piece kind of thing. <laughs> but as soon as he gets there, he's like, so you made this massive company and, and what about all those people you killed? Tell me about them. It's like, what? I mean, it's... What did he think was going to happen? Well, it was at that point where I thought the film might have had some kind of message. You know, it was it was kind of driving at corporations exploiting people, exploiting the poor, and and how the Riz Medical Ahmed character, companies. yeah, just didn't care about the well being of the people that he was testing on things, and he was w- willing to step on anyone to to get ahead and to drive his discoveries. But as I was kind of absorbing that at the beginning. It all just kind of disappeared again as as uh, it devolved into another film altogether. I think. Yeah, well, you have that montage at the start of Eddie doing his like Good Samaritan news reporting, where it's like, look at him—he's a crusader for the innocent, and he, you know, he likes justice or finding justice and corruption and and all that stuff. And then he goes to this this you know this guy and says to him, "So, what about all these people that you might have killed?" Um, yeah, it just it it feels kind of a stupid thing to do because he, I got the impression in that montage that he had proof to tell the story and the other things, but it doesn't seem like he's got that here. He just accuses him openly, and then but he does have proof, but he can't bring it up because he broke into his girlfriend's computer to find her. Oh, yeah, but, sh- but surely it'd be better doing your puff piece and then slowly investigating what you know is happening, gathering your evidence, you know, because you know, you know at that point that the story's true. You've just got to find evidence that isn't on your girlfriend's laptop. Yeah, the montage your did, laptop, you know? did make it seem like he was, you know, a good journalist and he was basing all this on, on his research and his uh, yeah. investigations. And then, yeah, like you say, he just kind of uh, turns his back on all that and thinks, right, career. It's because he had... Down the toilet. And we're back to toilets again. He had... Um, <laughs> he had broken... He got the information and then he was like, I can't tell you how I got the information, just believe me. And he doesn't bring up the fiancé, but somehow the fiancé's company finds out she gets fired, he gets fired. And he well, should have just been like... because there's no other way he yeah. could have known that. It was he like a classified like, document. Well, yeah. But he should have just been like, well, it's gone too far. I'm just going to say what it is. I got it from this. This is it. And instead he lost everything. He did, and um, I actually quite liked it when I can't even remember the guy's name. Riz Ahmed's character, IMDb, Bad Carlton Drake. One. Carlton Drake. Uh, he says to Eddie, "Have a nice life." Then his boss says, "Have a nice life." Um, yeah. And conspiracy. I feel like that's the slogan of the Life Foundation, though. They have a nice life, and it's like, but I like the whole "I'm about to ruin your life" undertone to it. And then when his boss says it, that's like, "Yeah, this guy got you fired." And then what I was expecting Michelle Williams Anne to say was also have a nice life when she like took her <laughs> engagement. Her, but she didn't. But Venom really or Venom or Eddie or they really got they. really got him back at the end when he said have a nice life. So, you know. Wait for that to pay off. Yeah, he'd been holding on to that one for a while. <laughs> <laughs> or was it a while? I mean, how long what's the timeline of this film? Like three, four days? <laughs> so Eddie um, yeah there's just not much to him really and there's not much definition to him his character changes to meet the needs of the scene I think he also has a really nice apartment for someone that has no money well he doesn't do you know what I mean especially on San Francisco I prices yeah I mean, he's. I, I get exactly what you're saying that he kind of switches character depending on what scene he's in I think when he's joint with a symbiote and that sort of frantic, maybe 20 minutes worth of the film where he's figuring out what's wrong with him, 
you know, sitting in a, a pool full of lobsters, <laughs> and I think, you know, I think is some of the the most fun the fun stuff that he does. But I agree that the character, the way the character's written, is just all over the shop. It's like he's surely he's not got to where he is as an investigative journalist. <laughs> You know, by just sort of marching in somewhere and confronting them direct to their face and going, so you killed lots of people, you know. How many stories did that work on in the past? And that's why I mean and about then, the tone as well, is it feels like there's that kind of body horror thing going on, but then it's, in some some ways it's played for laughs, and in others it's it's supposed to be this massive transformation that he's going through. I, I thought it was going to be more of this, like, on you know, he would fall unconscious, and when he'd wake up there'd be a dead body, or some body parts, or, you know, even the stuff when he's going through the flat and he's eating everything out of the garbage, and, and then throwing up, and... I thought there was going to be this weird, like you say, this this body horror sort of. There's something inside me, and it's wrong, and I don't know what's going on. And I've, the voice in the head, I thought they were going to just play out for a lot longer. Um, but yeah, it's it's I, as much as I found all these bits of the character really, really weird. There was something about the way Tom Hardy did it that was kind of a little bit fun in places, mm-hmm. and that's why I don't want to go full on saying that the character was awful because there was some little sort oh, yeah, of fun he, bits. When he jumps in a lobster tank and just starts chewing down, that's that's brilliant. It's just so so insane, and uh, just some of the, the the little things he does in certain scenes where he's just where he's just acting like a crazy person. Uh, I love all that. Just storming into a restaurant, interrupting his ex fiance's dinner with her <laughs> new bland boyfriend. Who uh, takes it all quite well, that guy. He does. <laughs> I think you've got a parasite. That, <laughs> is it supposed to be talking to me? Or am I supposed to be able to jump up to the top of a tall tree? It's like, well, you know, different <laughs> symptoms exist for these sorts of things. So who knows? <laughs> what do you guys think would have made it better? Like, what could it have done? A second um, act. That would have helped. That we would have been like, do you know what, that was great. I think if they'd decided what kind of film they wanted to make, so if they wanted to make some kind of body horror creature feature thing and then just rolled with it the whole way through, then mm. that would have been something. Or if you really wanted to make it a buddy comedy about a boy and a symbiote, do that. <laughs> you know, but just pick something and run with Never it. Never the twain shall meet. Yeah, that was it. And I was, um, I was actually more into the whole banter back and forth between... Eddie and the symbiote because I think it was apparently a lot of it was ad-libbed which makes sense because the rest of the dialogue is atrocious so you know <laughs> the uh, the fact that Tom Hardy's making it up as he goes along and doing the voice of both characters is just you know they riff off each other so well yeah, and I think that he's probably just nuts enough to be able to pull that off I, I mean Tom Hardy the actor yeah <laughs> uh, you know it's kind of one of these he's supposed to be pretty intense and, and gets pretty involved in his roles so that I think he was well cast for that, for playing that particular aspect of this role. Yeah. So if they just stuck with something and told that story, but they were just telling three or four different things, and mm. and none of it really coalesced into anything coherent. You know, it was just, just stuff kept happening. More and more stuff. It's like now in this scene he's doing this, and you know, um, oh look, it's time to visit the newspaper so he can drop off this. USB stick or whatever the hell it is. Um, they, oh no, is it a file? I can't remember. It's something. He drops something off and says, do the right thing. And then there's, you know, there's, there's that great bit where uh, Venom says, jump out the window. And then the next thing, he's pressing the button for the elevator and just pussy is all that he says. <laughs> Stuff like that, but it was really good. But it's like the. It's just the, all these weird little diversions that just didn't go anywhere. For me, it just wouldn't be like it could have been so much better if they just worked a little bit more in the relationship between Venom and Brock, because I just feel like they jumped really key important bits, like we mentioned earlier. You know, and Venom's mind change about uh, wanting to destroy the Earth with his fellow alien friends, and I'm just like if they just spent a little bit more time and not rushed it. Or cut bits out so much. It just well, would have whole... been a bit more convincing because it lacked that sort of genuine connection between the two. And you, I wanted it to work, but well, the whole development of the, you know, the the venom look, it happens in a single scene. So you have all that throwing up and eating frozen potato things 
all that stuff. And then suddenly people attack, there's tendrils, there's a bike chase, and then he just becomes the big gorilla beast. Mm. He eats someone, he buggers off. Venom's like, I want to destroy the planet. I want access to that spaceship that's about to launch um, so I can bring all my gooey friends back and chow <laughs> down on planet Earth. Um, and then the next thing you know, it's actually I kind of like this planet. I'm going to help you save it. It's like there's just complete lack of a second act. Like the se- the first act is sort of him getting to that that point where he's like infected, and then act two should be about him getting used to that whole thing. And then, but it just takes place over like three or four minutes, and it just and then suddenly you're in the climax of the film, and but then you're this weird bit with an MRI machine where mm. yeah and. Mm. I did not like that bike chase. <laughs> no? Actually, no. I thought that was the best part. I thought it was quite well done. You thought that about Star Trek as well. <laughs> Anytime there's a bike, <laughs> I, I can feel myself just thinking, oh, this is just action for action's sake. They're just throwing things in here. I, f- I, I thought, thought it was the, the most bike- kinetic sequ- sequence in the film, though. That's not saying much. No, no. I, I thought I thought the bike chase was okay. My only thing about it was it was slightly too long. It was like once they had done a few sort of tricks using the symbiote and the bike to sort of manoeuvre in ways that would normally be possible, you're like, okay, I get it, that's quite cool. And then that should have been enough, but it went on for just, you know, about ten minutes too long, it felt like. Precisely. Was that bit where they had to stop at the lights to let Ant-Man go past on his, like, flatbed truck? <laughs> That joke did not land. <laughs> you can edit in laughter later. <laughs> I can. I'll just edit in Ryan's laughter. It's like, where did that Wembley crowd come from? <laughs> they were here the whole time yeah. in front of our live studio yeah. audience. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. The, the bike chase is the only bit I really remember that fondly, you know. And then, but it does end with him just becoming Venom uh, in terms of the visual, and then eating some guy's face um, while well, listing off the ingredients of. A human being. He jumped into the harbour, swam across, and then made a call on his mobile phone. And I was just thinking, does the symbiote preserve his uh, possessions? My phone's waterproof. Oh right, in For that up case, to half an hour. It's seamless. Maybe, maybe um, Venom. Venom's maybe waterproof. No, the he's not because because uh, Eddie was soaking afterwards. All ah, right, okay, thank well, you, Craig. <laughs> Don't you remember that important detail where, where Anne says, Eddie, you're soaking wet. <laughs> He's just got a Huawei P20 Pro. It's so, it's so he could change into that t-shirt or hoodie or whatever it was he was wearing um, when they did the reshoots. They needed a scene for that, apparently. Well, they probably should have had product placement for the phone. The waterproof phone. The Sony waterproof phone. Yeah. No one Huawei. uses devices that aren't Sony in this film. Huawei. Just like oh, every Sony film. Because it is made by Sony. Yeah. Yes, and uh, this Black Friday, get your Sony MRI machine. <laughs> Half price at Argos. Half price at Argos, yeah. Or Best well, we Buy don't, if you're We don't need listening. to buy them here because we've got the NHS, but maybe in America. <laughs> Wouldn't you just like an MRI machine anyway? Yeah. Lovely. No, don't they like, kill you? I feel like a brain scan this morning, see how it's going in there. I don't know. Maybe best not to check. But if you've got a symbiote, it will be very harmful to it. True. So, yeah. So Eddie is... I don't know, there's potential there, but but you never get a sense of who he is or what he really stands for, other than, my life was ruined because I was an idiot and therefore feel sorry for me. I do feel sorry for him because he just wants to bring a little bit of justice into this unjust world. Yeah, but there are ways of doing it. And going into someone's office and saying, you kill people, probably not the best way to oh, do Oh, look, right. He goes in a little headstrong, but sometimes you can't dance around these things. And I admire his audacity to go in and do that. Obviously, it just doesn't work out well for him because he doesn't have the support of a partner or... Um, yeah, if he had a more supportive partner, things could have been different for him. He did get her fired. Yeah, but if... She could have chosen to leave such a terrible company that was doing really horrible dealings. Do you know what I mean? She was aware of really terrible stuff. And she didn't well, she hadn't read her emails yet. So. <laughs> no, but it was something she about, might have resigned on the spot. It was, the reading it. it was something that she was aware of, though. I don't know. Yeah. 
I mean, Anne is a very problematic character. Mm-hmm. Like, I just wondered why she was there half the time. Just running around. I think we've explained why. Yeah. For those plot reasons. Yeah. It's, you know, you, but there's nothing to her. She's just sort of there. Not her fault. Well, it, no, of course not. No, it's the fault of the writing. And the fact that Michelle Williams agreed to be in this thing when she's mm-hmm. been in so much better stuff is, it makes you wonder, like, what, how did they convince these people, you know, these yeah. Stars of Dawson's yeah. Creek. <laughs> well, that's no, it. but I did. I did wonder that because it takes it takes Michelle Williams, I think, most of the movie to feel comfortable in that in that role. If you can see she was comfortable, but the start, it's just very unlike previous roles we've seen played. I felt like she was trying to be Pepper Potts, you know, that kind of like lovely feminine type side character that we've seen in other comic book stories and uh, and it takes a lot of the movie before she kind of moves out of that. But even the way she talks is different, you know? She, I know it's she's like, an actor, but yeah. it's just not right. She's like MJ in the, the Raimi Spider-Man film. She's not a character, she's a character's girlfriend. Mm-hmm. That, or, mm-hmm. Well, not even <laughs> for most of the film, but... Um, I found she, that character very pointless. She's she's just there to provide like a, a motivation and a risk. That's that's like the the role there. And there's not there's not really anything else other than that. He needs to be jilted and in a place where you're like, oh, nothing's gone right for him. So they, you know, the fiance's got to go to give the the you know the lead character their motivation to be even more upset, even more fed up. And then it's something to aim for, you know, I'm going to win my girlfriend back at the end, sort of thing. And, I mean, how how she ends up at the end, I know I'm kind of going into plot bits more than uh, a character thing at this point. I've got no idea how she works out how to get into um, the rocket launch control centre and how she learns how to work the PA system. <laughs> how How did she do that? When did she learn to do that? Anyone? Anyone? Anyway, any answers? I, f- I feel. I feel. There's. I feel there's. How they knew how oh. to work the PA system. Or we just how, how, that how, they knew? how did how did that she happen? She tells you. She knows how to fight dirty. That that that's that's very true. And maybe she beat up loads and loads and loads of people. But she is then standing in some sort of like, not secret control room, but you imagine slightly more secure control room. At yeah. some point at the end, I. I it's bits like this in films where I go, right, there's a massive time jump somewhere in here. <laughs> or or there's some kick-ass action scene that has just happened where she's beating up a load of people on her way in. Well, I think most of the people in that facility were dead at that point. Oh, they've run out. <laughs> they've run away, but that is a big building. That, yeah. that's, that's, that's not, like, only 20 people operating that whole building. Could be. Um, at that time of night, you know. I don't know. Um, the the that whole part at the end where yeah, where she's become she venom and all that stuff. It's really yeah. It's, it, it annoys me because I mean I alluded to this earlier. Something about it annoyed me. So in this film, symbiosis or true symbiosis was a very difficult thing. <laughs> like not it couldn't be achieved by just anyone until you it's know, not. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, all these subjects uh-huh. died, and then. Turns out, for whatever reason, Eddie Brock is the perfect genetic match for the Venom symbiote. Don't know why, he just is. Mm -hmm. And then what you've got is you've got Anne Weying, bonded with the Venom symbiote, cutting about like there's no problems. So what, is she also a perfect genetic match for him? And then is Carlton Drake this perfect genetic match for Riot? So all this testing he was doing was a waste of time because he was the answer all along. (laughs) I, I think it just I think it just proves that the symbiotes are picky and it's nothing to do with genetics whatsoever. Yeah. It's like they look and go, nah, don't like look at you, I'm gonna wreck your body and then I'm gonna ditch you. Yeah. And that's basically what they <laughs> what they did. And if it wants, it can go, Do you know what, tiny yappy dog, you'll do. And it goes, you know, I just yeah, I, I didn't get why it suddenly flipped round and was like, no, 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 it's not that there is like a chance of one in 50 people. It's now, you know, one in two. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, it's just really weird. It's so the whole basis of, of whatever it was changed because, I mean, I I never that never occurred to me. I quite like the idea of that the symbiote chooses chooses what host it's comfortable with. So all the the hosts that they were being forced into, they were just eating them because they didn't like them. Um, but they weren't even being forced. They were just being exposed to them. Yeah. Well, forced in the sense of they can't survive in our atmosphere f- for some reason. And there's a body I can latch on to who will help me survive in this atmosphere. So they latch on. I don't like this guy. Kill him. And then this guy will bring me another one and keep doing that until eventually I find one. And then for some reason, Venom finds Eddie and thinks, I like this guy. And stays with him. Did this script go through multiple rewrites? Yeah, I would imagine so. <laughs> because it has, it really has that kind of feeling to it that, you know, it's very unfocused in terms of these points, and it starts out trying to make the sorts of social, political points we were talking about earlier, and then you know, drops all that in favor of, well, we need a big fight scene at the end, so get to it. Yeah. Um, what did you think of Carl and Drake anyway? as a character. I mean, I don't think he was really a character. He was just a collection of villainous lines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, I like Riz Ahmed, but I don't think that he had much to work with here. <laughs> pretty no, no, pretty no, standard, no. Uh, you know, um, not even, not really the moustache twirling type, but it was just, you know, kind of slimy corporate yeah. villain type. You notice how his motivation entirely changed by the end as well. Mm-hmm. So it was about symbiosis is about getting into space and surviving in space because the you know the symbiotes can act as like a living space suit fine okay i can understand where you're coming from from a scientific point of view and then by the end he was like you know what i'm going to help this thing bring all his friends home to kill us all like it's a bit of a leap i mean the 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 leap that i didn't get with that character is they go on about him at the beginning and they say how he how he got started and came up with this miracle cure and all all that started from very humble beginnings and i'm trying to work out at which point this character went do you know what would help me uh cure even more people is killing lots and lots of homeless people in my basement (laughs) when when did that that when did that sort of change come around it's it's like you know when you hear the description of oh you came up with this cure you would used all this research and you did all this starting from very humble very small beginnings and now you've built this big company at which point did he go, do you know what, when I was in my small shed, I didn't have enough people to kill in order to come up with my miracle cures, but now I'm rich. Classic trajectory for all boy genius. Yeah. You know, you now, th- now that I'm a richer that, villain. Um, do you think that anyone who works for the Life Foundation that has a bad performance review becomes part of the killing stock? Yeah. It's like, you didn't get... Uh, you, you got uh, performing below expectations on your end-of-year review, so <laughs> down to the basement. Development needed. Yeah. Development <laughs> Report needed. to the symbiote department. <laughs> Report, Report <to> the <laughs> you sound too familiar with the uh, with those bad grades, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> That's, it's when I'm handing them out at Neil Before Blog at the end of the year. You know? Damn it, he turned <laughs> it on me. <laughs> It's a end of your review time coming up soon. Uh, Just saying, guys. <laughs> time aside for personal development. That's it. <laughs> what are your goals for 2019? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. More puns. Yeah. Yeah, so Carlton Drake kind of, a, kind of sucks. There's also... There's no real antagonism between him and Eddie. They have that one scene where Ed, um, he's like, I'm going to ruin your life. And then he does. And then they don't really cross paths again until the end. Not yeah, and even even then it's not really personal at that point, no, is it? No, not at all. Um, It's very weird. I mean, in terms of the... Mm. So in terms of the plot, there's there's all this stuff about stopping the, the invasion of all the other symbiotes, which... You know, it doesn't really become known until Venom tells you what his plan is at the very or plan was at the very end, and you've got all this stuff about this, you know, the symbiote hopping, the the riot symbiote hopping bodies, for like six months, is it? Yeah, it's it just oh, yeah. walks away. Yeah. I'd forgotten yeah. about that. 
Yeah. That was crazy as well. I forgot why all was, about that. Why was that necessary? I mean, why couldn't they have just had another one in the facility that was trying to get out? I don't know. You know? In because fact, one at some goes, point that would have played into some other plot point and then it was just kind of, oh, well, we've failed them as much oh, of that. No, no, it's because all these movies are doing massive China marketing <laughs> That's true. That's right. they, have we, to, they have to feature some yeah. Chinese We talked about this on scenes. the way out because we were mentioning that uh, China, of course, is becoming like an even greater market, that yeah. all these new movies are uh, trying to find a way to maybe this is why it's doing so well. Maybe what's its figures in China? Don't know. Probably great. Yeah. But I'd like so as a person just... in symbiote count as a double viewing. Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> How do you charge? <laughs> nah, one body, one seat. They should just be upfront about it and be like, "This movie is Venom goes to China, Black Panther goes to Korea." You know? <laughs> yeah. Venom doesn't yeah. go to China though. Okay, but he could have. Yeah. He could have, yeah. But the there is actually a symbiote that, that gets forgotten about because you've got the Venom symbiote. We all know where that goes. Ryan. Go there's the blue one that dies. And then there's a fourth one that is never seen or mentioned after the opening scene. Chandler. It's like an orange... I can't remember what colour it was. <laughs> Chandler. Yeah. What do you mean they've got colours? Have they got colours? They're all different colours, yeah. Like, Riot is uh, silverish. Uh, Venom is black. Mastodon. The blue one. <laughs> yeah. And what's the, I can't remember the fourth. What color the fourth one was? Saber tooth tiger. <laughs> oh. Um. Can we talk a bit about bit about the symbiotes having their Earth names that they apparently knew <laughs> up front? <laughs> <laughs> so Venom has decided I'm called Venom. Fair enough. I don't know. I thought that would have been something he and Eddie would have arrived to together <laughs> as their, as their name. But whatever. But then he says later, "Oh, that's Riot." So is this what he was called in his home planet? I quite like that they've got names. Oh, I, I thought he was cute. called Ryan. Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> and sort of Venom, Riot, Gary, Brian. <laughs> you know, like, oh, what? Um, I yeah, think it's, it's cute that they've got names. Well, it's really weird that they had decided on these Earth names and somehow knew what they were. <clears throat> Uh, no, how, are they ex- how are they explained in the source material? How do you uh, know that it's an Earth name? So the host... Well, I mean, it is. It's in English. In yeah, but that. it could just it be, be that, translated. that's the noise. Yeah. Translated. Well, Venom, yeah. it might just be like Venom, num, num, num. It's like <laughs> the, wor- the sound that they make, and then they're like, oh, that, that's, that's, there's an equivalent here on Earth. In, in um, the comics, it's usually explained by the host... And symbiote sort of collectively deciding what they'll be called as a shared entity. Oh, so, that's really cute. It's like um, naming a baby. So like naming an know, apprentice team. That was it. So, <laughs> Ed, so Eddie Brock <laughs> Endeavor. <laughs> <laughs> so Eddie Brock and the symbiote decided that they were poisonous to Spider-Man. Therefore, they were going to be called Venom. Uh, Cletus Cassidy and his symbiote, they were going to create carnage. So carnage. There was other ones called. There was like toxin and. Shortbread. Shortbread. They sound like anti- Spice Girls. There's anti-venom as well. Oh, because yeah. that is a thing. That's, that's when yeah. Aunt, Aunt May gets infected by <laughs> <in> the symbiote. <laughs> yeah. Young Aunt May venom. <laughs> Young anti-venom. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. They're actually going to do this, you know. Yeah, we've said too much. Yeah, so the Earth name stuff was a bit weird. I also really liked uh, Venom's descriptions of, of Riot. It's like he can do, he could do strange stuff, and it was like he just made like axes and stuff with his, you know, out of his himself. He's got Which, all sorts you know, of weapons. Yeah, you know, like, like can yeah. Venom do this too? No, because I mean, he's got a greater imagination than him. So yeah, but Tom Hardy could imagine an axe, surely. It's not down to Tom Hardy to imagine the axe. Well, then why is he there? <laughs> He's just hosting with the most in. Yeah. <laughs> also, why would a, I mean, why would a, a, a alien species that exists in a sort of gelatinous state as its default shape know what an axe is? Well, fire safety think. regulations. <laughs> we don't know what they've seen before. You know, maybe there'll be like an origins, origins, like back on their home planet. Maybe. Oh yeah! I can't wait to, to see that. I need to stop giving the writers ideas because I swear to God that all my ideas that I said would be terrible for Spider-Man 
the last couple of times. They've gone and gone, hey, she said that would be terrible, so we're going to turn it into another movie. Did you see the trailers before and then the post credit scenes? Well, that is in the agenda. Yes, Jesus, I did. it's terrible. <laughs> Wait, you, you think Into the Spider-Verse looks terrible? Is this the animated one? Yeah. It looks shocking. Really? Yeah, it looks... looks amazing. No, oh my God, Craig! This is you're the target market for this this movie. It what people looks, that like Spider Man? Yeah, definitely. It looks a step too far. It looks absolutely appalling. I can't believe that I had to sit through such an extended post credit scene. Like, and what looks appalling about it? It just was. It's just. It looks like a joke. I watched a ten minute clip from the movie because they're like, "Oh, we've got nothing else to show you." They were like, "We really do well, have to sell you on this." Yeah. Well, that 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 is the weird thing about it. So you're it's a post credit scene in Venom that is shows you as its post credit scene a clip of another film that has nothing to do with it. Oh, That's it looks really. Dreadful. I'm looking forward to Into the Spider Verse. I think it's going to be a really good. Hmm. Well, maybe it'll uh, be surprising, but for I like me, that I just it, was like... It's like I like that gone. the different spider characters are all in different animation styles because they're from different universes. I mean, yeah, how original. But, like, <laughs> when, we, when we've talked about it before and I've been like, oh, my God, stop making them. We don't need to see it done this way, this way, this way, this way. It's like they've gone, wow, that's everything she doesn't want to see. Let's put it all together in a single movie because that's what, that's what the public want. I don't know. For me, I just I it ruined Venom for me. Actually, I left really deflated after that <laughs> that end scene. <laughs> well, I think loved it up to that point. Well, because I was in a sp- I was in a zone when it ended, and I was like, okay, cool, and then I had to wait, and then it got it was so bad that I was like, can we leave? Do we have to watch the whole scene, or can we get up and what like and just walk out? And we stayed and watched the whole bit, and I just was like, when will this end? Well, I did think it was an overly long clip. Jeez, it's so long. Uh, I mean, I think in context of me watching Into the Spider-Verse, it'll be fine. But um, it coming after Venom was a bit jarring for me. I was like, what the hell is this? Yeah. Why are you putting this here? Yeah. You know. Yeah, they should have just done what like Pixar or whatever do and had like a little short at the start and been like, oh, if you're coming in late to the movie, watch this little, you know, 10-minute, 8-minute animated short. I don't know why it can't just exist like that. Put it, put it right at the end as a palate, a palate cleanser. <laughs> it was they be- just they like betrayed a... my trust. I was there <laughs> thinking, you know, this is where we normally get a little, like, tease for something else. Mm-hmm. And instead they were like, let's uh, cynically advertise you a kid's film that you don't want to mm-hmm. see. One that we'd already seen a really long trailer for before yeah. the start of the movie. <laughs> there was a trailer for it before <laughs> like, the movie as well. There was a huge well. trailer for it. And then it was like watching the same thing. And I was like, what are Sony doing it's like it's like they've seen what Marvel have done and it's become like this weird like awful version of it it's like just really pastiche like it's like they're they're trying to to get across a particular thing and they've completely missed the mark with it as far as I'm concerned Uh, that left a bad taste in my mouth for sure when we left well I for one I'm looking forward to Spider-Verse I think it's going to be good fun I think you're the only person. No, I'm I'm with him. It lo- it kind of looks quite good fun. <laughs> I've got to, I've got to oh step God, up for Craig on this one, but I'm sorry. Why? It looks why like it's going to be. S- there's a spider ham. I, I I can't I can't say any more than that. There's a spider ham. Therefore, it's yeah, going to. It's like what if Spider Man was a pig and then it it yeah, you, Chris. What if? <laughs> oh God. Anyway. Yeah. The, the only the only thing about it is I had to sit through that blooming Eminem song to get there. That's, you know. <laughs> um, you mean you were treated to the lyrical? Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you you know you you were punished with ten minutes of Into the Spider Verse, I was punished with what felt like ten minutes of Eminem. <laughs> Have you even Although, looked at the lyrics? We did. I mean, some of them don't make sense, but there are words when he just sounds like he's going. Nah, 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 nah. There are. He, there's like ten words in there, and I think that that's brilliant. We did get a post-credit scene that does tease a sequel that we are now definitely getting because it's making so much money. And it has Woody Harrelson in his Simply Red wig as Cletus Cassidy, a.k.a. Carnage. Mm. Oh, I'd forgotten about that because of that terrible, terrible post-post-credit scene. <laughs> I was think. I mean, I wasn't sure about the Woody Harrelson scene because I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be funny or not. 
He looks, um, yeah, he looks a bit ridiculous. He looks ridiculous, and the things he's saying are kind of supposed to be sinister. <laughs> but I just found it hilarious. Do you not think he looks like the bad guy from The Incredibles? Yeah. He <laughs> does a little bit, actually. Because yeah. yeah. I was like, and he talks like that, and his face is the same shape. And I was like, oh, maybe it's like a crossover, <laughs> and it's like this guy from The Incredibles. Yeah, sort of Mick Hartnell or uh, the bad guy from The Incredibles. So, uh. mm. so we'll get a sequel where Woody Harrelson is Carnage. And they'll probably make it about as half ass an attempt. Well, do you know, the the only thing I can say about them, if they do make a sequel, is maybe they'll take the bits from this. Because they threw so much at the wall during this Mm -hmm. film. Maybe they'll go, okay, what what did people actually come out and do? Did they like the fun buddy kind of element? Okay, they liked that bit. Okay, we'll lift that bit and keep it. This bit, this bit, and this bit goes or gets diminished in a way and it's out, out the way. I think the only the only problem is with with you know symbiote v symbiote you just end up with the same ending again which is a big CGI sort of mishmash at the end where one piece of silly putty is fighting another piece of silly putty. Yeah. It, that fight at the end was atrocious. It was dark. They both looked the same. It was blurry. It was fast moving. You're talking about Black happened? Panther, right? <laughs> <laughs> I I thought I thought seriously at the end of the fight it was going to be the two separating and they would each be in the wrong symbiote. <laughs> That's what I thought was going to happen, like in the wrong clothes kind of thing. Going, hang on, this isn't the one I came in here with. Whose symbiote is it anyway? Yeah, it's like when uh, it's like when your friend picks the same character as you in a PlayStation game, beat him up. You know, it looks slightly different, but it's the same thing. But that's all it was, and apparently, Riot had the home field advantage because he had. He could make weapons that Venom couldn't for some reason. Yeah, it was I, I, I didn't, I didn't understand that at all, and I didn't, I didn't quite understand what the plot was. So he was going to go off and get more symbiotes to come to Earth. Yeah, and then they would invade more. Yeah, but they would be really picky over who they had as soldiers, and then half of them would die. Yeah, like there'd be a couple of beagles fighting off against. I don't know what it's. <laughs> you know what, what? What if they're like Sambo? You know, does it work on sharks? Oh, now you're uh, talking. Yeah, you could have like Sambo. It would be like a mega shark v giant mega venom crossover. <laughs> a megalodon venom. Yeah. I think that you're giving them more ideas. We're never going to get shot off this movie. Now. It's a meg. <laughs> I think I think the thing is is like because it's now made made this money, it's probably gonna get a sequel. But like I say, my hope would be that they would take the bits that people have gone, ah, do you know what that bit worked, that bit maybe, 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 and then put it together. I just don't see how the films are gonna end in any other way other than one of these CGI symbiote V symbiote mm-hmm. kind of fights. It's like what do you pair against him? Because he's not got Spider Man to fight. He's not. We're presuming at this point that it's not going to sort of merge into the MCU in some weird, wacky way. So well, it surely can't because no one in this world knows that aliens exist. Yeah, yeah. So what's so what what is he going to get to fight at the other end? What's he going to do? Because like like you said, you know, from the comic book lore and stuff, he goes off and becomes Punisher for a bit, or he goes off and does. So is he going to be able to do that here? Not quite with super villains and do so. I don't know. Well, um, Eddie's going to teach the symbiote what good and bad means at the end. So you know, there's like who he's allowed to, he eat, not allowed to. Eat. But he already did that, though. Well, no, because he's still learning. No, but at the end, he's like, yeah, you can eat that guy because he's terrible. Yeah, but there's you know, there's other kind of good and bad bits that, that could you know. I I like that the the symbiote had a shopping list as well. That was. Yeah. At the end, that was good. It was like you either get me some food or I will eat you. That's that's the relationship they have at the end of the film. Yeah, that but is... it's kind of like a joke though, because it's like you wouldn't eat them because they came through so much together. It's like your best friends. She was chowing down on him earlier though. Wait, who are we talking about? Venom. Oh, but he and his kidneys and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but that's because he needed to survive. But now that they know that they've got options, he's not going to choose to eat him. They're they're friends. They're friends. They've bonded. Well, literally, they've achieved true symbiosis. 
And they're the best of friends. I don't know. I feel like the second film should just be a sitcom of those just sitting around and bickering about stuff. Central Park. Yeah, well, maybe. It's like, Venom, can you grab the remote? He's like, no, get it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just depressing that there's going to be a sequel. <laughs> yeah. It's just depressing that they're going to consider that as an actual option for stories. But yeah, the, if it is Carnage, which it probably will be, it will just end with him fighting a, a, a you know, a pallet swap of himself, mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. Although I'd quite like to see because Riot and Venom essentially look the same. I mean, Riot has that stupid grin that, that he wears all the time. But other than that, they look basically the same, other than the palette swap. I would quite like um, Carnage to be like, because in the comics he's like quite slim. Um, I don't know. It would just be visually something else to look at. Yeah, but that's kind of clutching at straws. I think when it's going to be just um, putty v putty. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how you do it. I mean. Which kind of brings us on to the sort of the point about is there any point in doing Venom without Spider-Man? And I think based on this film, no, because it didn't offer me anything else like that was more interesting than that. This is a character who exists because of Spider-Man. Like his in the comics, his origin is directly related to Spider-Man. If you look, if you look at some of his other villains, Craven the Hunter, for example. I mean, we're going to get that Drek, but uh, his origin has nothing to do with Spider-Man. It's just he crosses paths with them at some point. And there are other villains. Morbius doesn't have anything to do with them either, at least in the comics. So, you know, that you can sort of see that there might be a story for these other villains that aren't, that don't have their origin story directly linked, but Venom does. And if you're going to change that, you have to come up with something that's compelling it is a, a pretty a, weird by one. way of a replacement. But they don't. Because of how his appearance is kind of based on Spider-Man and a, a lot of his kind of powers and movement and stuff, you know, crawling on walls and things like that. It's Keeps all, webbing. Kind of, yeah. yeah, it's all, you know, very Spider-Man. And so it just doesn't make any sense to, for him to exist without Spider-Man. Yeah. And if they were going to turn it into something new and interesting, then they could have, you know, they would have had to convince us that, oh yeah, you don't need Spider-Man to make a good Venom thing. But no, you do. <laughs> you absolutely do based on this, because what did they come up with instead? Some alien parasite coming from an asteroid somewhere that bonds with a disgraced reporter and they have adventures. That's not interesting. You could, you know, you could lop the Venom name off this and just come up with that on your own. And it would be what it would be. But that wouldn't be as cynical a cash grab. No. I feel like it's... um. Okay, let me gather my thoughts here. I had some half-assed thoughts about an hour and a half ago and kind of forgot about them. Okay, so recently we watched Halloween 3. And I was Season really disappointed. Yeah, and I was really confused because... Where's Michael of, Myers? Well, yeah, you're like, what? well, what is the point of calling it Halloween? Because, like, it's apart from the music, it's got nothing to do with uh, Halloween. So you're you like, watch Halloween I'm really confused. Film. They do, but is that enough? So I was thinking about this, and I was thinking, you know, it's kind of like Halloween 3, where it's tied to these universes, I guess, and all this other previous stuff. It doesn't really show us anything from there. Um, it's well, just it's tied, tied in, in, in name to it's make not money. Tied, yeah, yeah, it's not tied in the least in terms of the the story and characters and whatever yeah. else. Like, there's no connection. Yeah, so you're just yeah. kind of like, well, what have, they, what have they done it for? And it's because yeah. they use that name. But I also feel like it's a bit unfair. I feel bad for Venom because I also feel like the fact that it's been produced by a different company um, and it just... And if it had problems with being, like, this, the script and everything like that, it just doesn't feel like it ever had things truly going for it. Like, I feel like... The film, I like that the film exists, I guess. I just, it's a shame that the form that it took on, I think it could have been better. I think that Venom can exist without Spider-Man. I think that the the story could have been much more interesting 
got? Is there a butt? There is a butt. I feel like it could be more interesting. But I like I, that it exists. I actually think you could have a series of Venom films uh, that spin off from his appearance in a Spider-Man film. So, you know, he turns up as a villain in a Spider-Man film and then that plot is resolved and at the end of the Spider-Man film he decides, I'm going to let this vendetta go and I'm going to go off and do something else, do my own thing. And then you have a series of Venom spin-offs. Yeah, I, 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 I can imagine you could get uh, Eddie Brock uh, raging against Spider-Man kind of thing for whatever maybe misconstrued reason. I do think you can have Venom without Spider-Man. I just, Mm -hmm. I think a lot of his power set and his look and his style are Spider-Man based. So then it becomes more tricky to explain. Um, But I think it just could have been implemented better. If they're going to create a whole universe of Spider-Man villains without Spider-Man, I think there were easier places to start than Venom. Mm Mm-hmm. That would have you could have then led into Venom, you know. You, once you create Oscorp instead of the Life Foundation or something, then you can then lead on to Venom. Then you've got scientists, so you can end up with your Doc Ock and whatever. It it, it you can build off based on that. Whereas mm-hmm. with this, I think they they knew that the I think they probably went where a villain that was known but didn't have as much of a tied-down backstory and other character integrations that they would need to do for Venom. And they could make Venom stand alone easier than doing their Norman Osborn film or, you know, one of them. And it was an already established name, though. Whereas Craven the Hunter isn't really outside of the comics yet. It's not been on film. Norman Osborn has, Doc Ock has... Um, you know, even Doc Connors has been on so far, so they've went for one that's maybe known but not well enough known that they're going to get into too many problems. And I don't think lots of you know man on the street hunters are going to be raging that there's no Spider Man in here, though some may have been drawn to the film under the illusion that there was going to be a surprise appearance. Mm-hmm. You know, some shock reveal, some. That, uh, he wasn't telling you that Spider-Man's not in the film. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing. It's like going, oh, well, he might not. And then you're saying, okay. And then you've got post credit sting. So people are like, oh, well, there'll be a little hint in a post credit sting, you know. And you're like, well, not really. And then really. you're faced with that animation. <laughs> stinker. So I, I don't... I do think you can have these villains without Spider-Man. I just don't think it flows particularly well. And I can see why Sony are doing it, because they own this property and they've got to do something with it. I don't think they're going to get to the stage where they just sign everything over to Disney to use. Um, Now, whether they will build up their little universe of villains and then once their deal runs out, I don't know what kind of deal they've got with using Spider-Man in the Marvel films. They might introduce another Spider-Man in amongst all this. They could have made this a spin-off to The Amazing (laughs) Spider-Man. Well, but the thing with The Amazing Spider-Man... turns up for a scene. Yeah, The Amazing Spider-Man, the second one... I mean, they pretty much teased that they wanted to do a universe of villains. They had all the villains lined out in a secret underground lair at one point. Yeah, the tentacles, the vulture wings. Yeah, they they had they had Rhinos planned in. that whole thing, which may be why you've got part of a weird script in here. Whether there was ever originally a Venom script floating about somewhere at Sony, and they went, oh well, we can use a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and add in this, and there we go, you know, bring it up to date throw in video journalism we're done yeah thing is i've read some of the comics of venom as a solo act you know the lethal protector stuff and i've read some of the comics of other hosts of venom as well and um i've had you know i've had some enjoyment out of of various bits of them but i'm much more interested in venom as a foil for spider-man that's why i was drawn to the character in the first place i remember watching the nineties cartoon, the three parter, the alien costume, three parter, the la- the end of the second part, the symbiote latches onto Eddie Brock, who is by the way voiced by Hank Azaria in that cartoon. How cool is that? Uh, and then 
he's revealed in the next episode. He's got the big white spider emblem. He's got like the snarling teeth. He just looks so cool. And uh, that's why I was drawn to it initially. And then, you know, I read up about the character and he's super sinister when the way he stalks Spider-Man and uh, doesn't trigger his spider sense and all this stuff. And yeah, it was, it was just good stuff. And then they started expanding a bit and introducing Carnage. It's a character I hate so much because he's just so crap. And, um, and, and other stuff. But th- that sort of early Todd McFarlane stuff of Venom was, was excellent when he was first introduced. I just just not hugely interested in Venom when he's not certainly not in the Marvel universe. We'll go that way. Um because you know he, he can interact with other characters who aren't Spider-Man in interesting ways, but outside of the Marvel universe and his own little thing, I just don't see the point. It's basically Spawn which is, <laughs> you know, very similar because Todd McFarlane created Spawn after he left Marvel and Marvel retained the rights to Venom, so he was just like, yeah, I'll come up with something that's pretty much the same. You know, Spawn has a more mystical origin, but still, it's like, much the same. So yeah, not not a huge, not hugely on board with the fact that we're going to get the Venomverse or whatever the hell they're going to call it. And, uh, and you just have this Venom who's a giant He's just, you know, just this giant black beast without the um, the white spider emblem. It's just, nah. Why are you doing this? I didn't think I could be any less interested in a cinematic universe than the Suicide Squad universe. <laughs> but the thought of another terrible villains as good guys, as villains, without the good guys we actually want to see... At least Suicide Squad had Batman in it, though. Like the Flash, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Just, uh, no, I, uh, yeah, I, it's a I terrible film, and you can I can't get to behind it. it. And you can listen to me and Cat ramble about it for a while. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's a uh, uh, it's a terrible film, but you've got at least that film took place in the universe it was supposed to take place in. Yeah, because this one doesn't. Do you think with Venom in this and Eddie Brock is kind of this campaigning uh, journalist going after villains kind of thing that they've now set up, that there's a chance that they're going to use Venom as a substitute Spider-Man when they're introducing their other villains to the universe? They could do. <laughs> Eddie Brock has a cameo at the end of Craven Hunter. I'm here to talk to you about the Venom initiative. <laughs> 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 I was more thinking that if he disagrees with something that Craven the Hunter's doing or or Craven the Hunter has the taste for symbiote um <laughs> instead well, of the Craven instead of be, yeah. instead of Spider-Man. Well the thing about Craven as a character, right? I just I just don't like him. I think he's kind of lame and I think the the 90s cartoon does the best job of adapting that character because they move away from all the rubbish the parts or the parts that I don't like and replace it with stuff that I do like. So they change them completely. So That's the way handy I, for you. Yeah, it works for me, but I don't know how well it works for other people. But, you know, Spectacular Spider-Man, which is a cartoon that I absolutely love, has a terrible version of Craven the Hunter in it. You know, it's even worse than the comics. But they, certainly in this day and age, you've got this guy that likes to hunt other human beings for sport. And it's like, the first question that you need to ask for a Craven the Hunter film is, who's he hunting and why? You know, it's... I mean, you can sort of understand that if he thinks that Spider-Man's worthy, pray for him, and he comes after Spider-Man. But like, I don't know. Like, it wouldn't make any sense for you have Craven the Hunter with Venom as the secondary character that he's hunting. Surely that's just Venom Two, where Craven the Hunter is the villain. You know. But it might be a way of them tying it into something that's already worked in inverted commas. You know, I, I don't. <laughs> You know, it's it's that cynical approach of, well, we've got something that kind of works and people like universities where they're all tied together. But this is True. where, you know, they seem to trip up again and again and again and again where they go, no, everyone's got to be in the whole... It's all got to be a shared universe. You can't have all these people existing. They could probably do more interesting films if they don't try and tie all these people in together at some point. Exactly, Whereas these are the they, sorts of... Um creative questions that they never actually think about before they <laughs> yeah well it gives these. them it gives them more narrative freedom 
you know, it means that they can go off and they can make it as barmy or as different as possible. If they want to go down a completely comedy angle, they can go down a completely comedy angle because it's not going to conflict with anything else in their universe. If you if you go down like a complete comedy route with something, and then you've got to then introduce a ridiculously dark Craven the Hunter film, for example, how how do you then smash those two things together into something? It becomes a disjointed mess. Well, I mean, if this is the pilot episode for you know a Sony cinematic villains of Spider Man without Spider Man universe, they need a better title than that. <laughs> uh, yeah, the. Um, this film actually, I mean, I'm not going to say it does it right, but it does what Marvel did in the beginning, like concentrates on telling or making a good film. You know, it concentrates on the film that they're making and then worries about the rest later on. So every, well, with a few exceptions, every Marvel film has basically done that. You know, it's concentrated on the film that they're making rather than the universe it inhabits, and that's what makes it work. Things like, Suicide Squad don't work because it does the opposite. Or Batman v Superman did the opposite. Or The Mummy, where Russell Crowe sits in for 10 minutes and talks to you about vampires and other stuff that exists in that universe. And it's, you know, it's just maintenance of something that you might never make. So at least they didn't assume they were going to get to the point where, oh yeah, we're going to have thousands of these buggers in a few years. Uh, so they've just made a film about Venom that doesn't allude to anything else well that's one of those things you know i was i was almost expecting in parts of this film for there to be stuff showing on tv in the background or newspaper articles about particular characters or stuff to sort of tease the fact that oh these other people exist by the way and thankfully one of the saving graces is that they didn't do that which means that they can keep this in its its isolated sort of venom bubble over at the other side and they can introduce their others yeah, but I think it runs the risk that they're going to try and make it all a combined universe and and join it. Yeah, uh, but if they do that later, that's fine. It doesn't hurt this film. I mean, this film no. has enough problems without worrying about that. <laughs> so you know, I know it's difficult. It's difficult. We'll just need to see what happens. Wait and see what happens. I mean, I know I'll see Venom too because I like all this kind of stuff, comic book stuff. Yeah, I'm there for the most part. There are a few things I haven't seen, mostly Netflix Marvel series because they bore the tits off me. Um, but you know, oh yeah, do I want to watch thirteen episodes of Luke Cage cutting about? No, not really. Um, I don't know, but we'll watch this space. I guess we'll see what happens. Although there is a Spider-Man connection that's not really a Spider-Man connection that people might have missed. Do you want me to tell you what it is? What? Go on. The pilot of the shuttle or the spaceship at the start of the film who dies is called John Jameson. I don't know what that means. The the son of J. Jonah Jameson. Who's that? (laughs) Who's that? J.K. Simmons. It's already been answered on this very podcast. (laughs) It's like that quiz we went to where the answer to one question was the same as the answer to a later question. (laughs) The guy didn't know it was the same person. Hawkeye! (laughs) What is it? (laughs) A cave in London. (laughs) A cave in London. Yeah. um, These jokes uh, will only be relevant to two, three other people. (laughs) Three three of which are already on the podcast. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, so I'll explain. uh, Four of us uh, recently went to an Avengers quiz in an establishment in Edinburgh and. one of the questions was, in Age of Ultron, who tries to lift the hammer first? It's Hawkeye. He didn't want the guy's real name because he didn't know what it was. And then later on, he uh, questioned, there's a question, Natasha Romanov is one of the members of the Avengers who has skills and not superpowers. Who's the other one? And I want his real name, not his superhero name. And the answer was uh, Clint Barton, which is Hawkeye. So, you know, he had not the guy knew so little about the subject he was asking questions about that he didn't realise that the answer to the question was the same guy. Or maybe he was just testing you in a different way. No, no, he said at the start he knows bugger all about Marvel stuff. No, I thought he did an Avengers thing. Uh, we did do rather well on the music round, though. Just we saying. We did. He was a bit like the people who made this film. <laughs> yeah. So, John Jameson's in it, but he dies. So, does that mean that Marvel can't use... Jameson in the MCU 
or just the two Johnny Jameson they have. I don't pay attention to any of that anyway. Yeah. Well, Jameson's the one of the best things about the the Rumi Spider Man movies because he's so funny. Anyway. So I think on that note, it's time to wrap up. We've spent longer talking about Venom than anyone else ever has. The writers. Than the writers, yeah. Um, so, as a wrap-up, what are we going to say about this as a as a thing? Here for more of it? Would rather it just was one and done? Or you wish you hadn't spent the two hours watching it and now the subsequent two hours talking about it? One and done. One and done. <laughs> Chris? As I stick by what I said earlier on, maybe if they learn from this, they could create something else. Now they've done the slightly messy introduction, maybe they can do something with it. But I'll go with one and done. Yeah, in my heart, it probably is going to get something else, but they could do something with it. There is some potential in there. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be, so yeah. Uh, I'd rather this wasn't made at all, to be honest, even though I kind of enjoyed it. Uh, it's because I really want to see a good cinematic adaptation of the Spider-Man puts on the black suit storyline, and we're just not going to get that, because they're making this instead. So, Well, maybe in eight years' time you'll get it. Maybe, maybe, but I don't think so. Um Infinity I, going War by been, the past, I would not really yeah. this possibility. I know. Infinity War would have been the perfect place for him to get the black suit. I'm just saying... But no, he gets that rubbish. What's the, what's the stop him from getting it? Isn't it? Well, because he doesn't get it. That's that's what stops oh. him from getting it. <laughs> yeah. it or because he doesn't. Events. <laughs> <laughs> the, the fact that the film came out last year, this year, and uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm living in a different uh, timeline, so I'm sorry about that. Yeah, Indeed, you're kind of, we're living in a timeline where we have already recorded the. You're kind of the podcast. Doctor Strange of this gang. Yeah. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Natalie, what do you think? One and done, or want to see more? Um, I'm with Chris's um, first half of what he said. <laughs> I think that now that they've established who this character is, I think that they'll either have a bit more fun with it, um, or they'll get a bit more serious. I think they'll go a bit more fun. Uh, I will go and see the sequel when it comes out, in the hope that they've um, maybe spent a bit more time. On, on it in general um, but I think I think maybe it's just a tricky character, I think the people producing it it's tricky for them to, a lot of excuses um, I don't regret going to see it, I regret sitting through the post credits but um, <laughs> yeah we've discussed that already no, I think I think it'll be okay, it'll be, that's the thing it's not going to be amazing, it's just going to be one of those yeah okay I'll go and see it, fill a gap which is maybe maybe how they've made half a billion pounds off of it. Like it's filling a gap. Um, I don't see it taking on uh, any of the other big character movies, so they'll probably be very careful with when they release it. But um, I'll go see it probably. Yeah, I'll see it because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> Yeah. You're into that masochistic venom loving we were talking about <laughs> <That's> earlier. <laughs> uh, let's not bring that up again. Chris, hit the music. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that is our discussion of venom. So that's that. Uh, Chris, thank you for being here. You're <laughs> welcome. He's just sitting there like a turd in the wind. As I do every evening. Yes, as whatever that is. Um, you if you haven't seen it, you should see the. Uh, no, no one knows what it means. That's the joke. But uh, if you haven't seen it, you should watch the uh, how it should have ended Venom teaser thing, where he just doesn't understand how phrases work. So he just keeps coming up with you know. Well, um, I I can't remember what some of them are, but they're really funny. So link in the show notes as always. Uh, oh, and should we go to our presenting sponsor, which I forgot to do earlier. Oh wait, is that me? Yeah. <laughs> if you're a fan of Harry Potter, uh, I'm selling original film cells uh, from Deathly Hallows, which are pretty cool, on Etsy under Tatty Bojangs. Have a look. Both of those are terrible, but they're a really cool piece of cinematic history, considering that 35mm is like gone now, pretty much. 
So that's that's me. Etsy it. Get some Harry Potter uh, original merch. Did it fall Dunzo. out of a factory window? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. Never mind. Source unlisted. Source unlisted. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's that. That's our sponsor. So uh, thank you for Oh my listening. god, should I send you like a little free one in the post so it's like legit? Show notes. Kind of if you want. Yeah. Link okay. to your Etsy store. Link in um, the show notes. I've got some really cute business card size ones, Craig, so I'll send you your favourite character and you can keep them with you for always. Yay. Who's your favourite? <laughs> Who is my favourite Harry Potter character? I'll think, need to think about that. I feel like this is as relevant a chat as the post-credit uh, spider verse <laughs> is to Venom, so... What is Craig's p- favourite Harry Potter character? It's <laughs> a good question. I don't All remember right. who most of them are. I don't know. The, I'll go with the guy that... The guy that's played by Gary Oldman. I liked him. Oh, no, yeah. Snape. Alan Rickman. I yeah, love Alan I've Rickman. Got, I do have some Alan Rickman, actually. I've got some Severus Snape. I've also mm. got, if you want... Uh, Alice in Wonderland or Narnia. They look pretty cool. This is getting more and more like the post credit sequence. I know. So I'm going to go. I really need to pee. It's been a pleasure. So uh, okay. thank you for having so, us. So, Angus, try, thanks for joining. <laughs> thank you. Thank uh, you. Natalie, thanks for joining. You're welcome. That was our discussion on the movie Venom. A special thanks to musical YouTuber Pretty Bangs Feet Bone Creed for the cover of Eminem's Venom song. If you like what you heard, then as always, please hit that subscribe button on iTunes, YouTube, or any major podcasting app. If you iTunes users could rate us and leave a comment, that would be amazing. If you want to discuss this or anything else with us, you can leave us a comment on kneelbeforeblog.co.uk. We hope you'll join us on the next Neil Before Pod.